Hello, my BMX nerd friends. Welcome back to another episode of Canode Knows. This week on the show, we got Tony Maloof, videographer, pro, used to be pro rider, not a pro rider anymore, but he's still, he's still great. And he's a stand-up comedian in Austin, Texas now. Uh, we did some drinking, so I hope that we didn't say anything too crazy. I just looked, it's like three hours long, so who knows if you're, uh, if you're a real nerd and you stick it through, let me know what you think. Let me know if I said anything crazy. Let, let me know if Tony said anything crazy. Yeah, that's it. It's a it's a loose one. So enjoy. Have a good uh, rest of your week. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Here's Tony Maloof. That was a shit clap. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Broad. For those of you at home, Zoom always says recording in progress right when we start these episodes. <clears throat> this week on the show, we got Tony Maloof. What's up, dude? Hey, man. Hey, Bob. Hey, bring the energy. What's up? Welcome to the show. Tony, how's your day? How's Austin, Texas treating you? My day is over because it's the evening. <laughs> it's eight o'clock. It's six o'clock here. Sunday, Sunday evening. Yep, Sunday fun days, my dad calls it. When's 1235 coming out? Hopefully in 2024. <laughs> Where is it at? And are you like still filming shit for it? There's no way that you're still actually filming. You're just in the editing mode. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm open to like get clips. But, you know, like at the moment, I, I, I don't even know if any of my cameras function. They're just total fucking on the wall now it's awesome they look great like they look fantastic but if i were to pull them down i have no idea fucking the batteries tapes all that stuff is like so far gone now it's like, a nightmare don't go back it, but it's like three four years past a nightmare i can remember it sucking that long ago yeah uh, yeah. you're telling me, man, every, every Sunday that I bring the VX out to film with the boys, I'm just like, cause like all week I'm using the A7S three and the FX three and a gimbal and everything's beautiful. And then I pull out the stupid mini DV tapes camera. So catch me and everybody else up on like, first of all, for people who don't know what is 1235. Second of all, how long has it been a project and why is it this elusive bastard that whoever I talk to about you. It always comes up. When the hell is he going to put out 1235? That piece of shit, dude. Yeah, they're talking about me, right? Not the project. <laughs> no, I think the project's good. <laughs> Not, so yeah, <laughs> Maloof's a piece of no, shit because he won't finish it. I can take it. I can take it. Don't start talking shit on my passion, baby. <laughs> no, it's definitely been over 12 years. Like There was a joke when we were like, oh, it's been 12 years. It'd be a perfect time to release. <laughs> 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 Sounds so funny now. But, um... Yeah, I mean, it is my project, so technically everybody can suck a dick. <laughs> technically, all right, cool. <laughs> you That's kind of how I feel about mine. It's I'm pushing yeah, six I years, five years. I don't care. Um, it's kind of changed like so much over the years. You know, like if you have to think about like your life in twelve years of how much you're sitting in traffic or how much you're sitting long distance driving or. Who knows? Just like trying to fall asleep when you're not tired. You know, I've seen the film. I've made 1235 in more than one way. Like I, there's like bonus fucking features in, in my brain. You know, Yeah. I've seen everybody's part done. I've seen the other people's parts to other songs. And I mean, that's just how it is. Like you can't you could twist my arm and be like, yeah, you didn't finish it. Recently, somebody from the crew that has parts filmed really got upset and like hit me up. Oh uh, shit! I'm not gonna say it. But yeah, yeah. And I was like, dude, you know, fuck you. I wish I was out too, but you know, my my job became filming and editing for so long. I just I, and then I had a relationship and you start growing up like I, I couldn't go home and just work on it. It just that's how it happened. You know, I understand that more than you could possibly know. <clears throat> so no, and I, then what I, I well, I mean, there's I'm still actively I want to film more of a Mr. Mata. But for me, like I, I have these thoughts in my head of like, there's no way I'm going to top the first one. And then I 
like you said, you mentioned like talking or thinking in the car as you're driving. I'm like, I've done the same shit where I'm just like, all right, this is what I would do for the intro. This is like how the theme of it would go. And then I'm like, ah, it's yeah. whack. I just have this constant cycle of like, it, the bar is almost too high. Like, so I'm, I, do you have that, like, do you have that same thought of like, it's, it's gotta be really fucking good at this point? Yeah. I mean, it's, it, I'm comfortable to say, but like say this now, but there was a time when we like wanted to win Nora cup. Yeah. You know? Like we were like we're gonna we we could be like contenders for Nora Cup. That's how good this video is. Yeah. And years go by, video doesn't come out, and now there's like I mean there's still Nora Cup. But let's be honest, who cares? <laughs> Fucking. It's just you know times have changed. Like nobody's gonna nobody even has DVD players anymore. You know, so like even the release and the premieres and everything has been reconcepted in my head you know and <clears throat> it is still like my thing it's my baby and yeah you know the dudes that rode sure but it's not like i'm gonna bounce back like crazy financially from like releasing this video right yeah there's uh -huh. no there's no dollar sign on it it's really just putting it all out so spoiler alert just for anybody who fucking listens to Kano knows anymore um, there's a good amount of homies the nerds hey. my boys shout out to you guys yeah shout out to everybody listening that it's uh appreciated more by bobby but i respect y'all also i would just say that i'm gonna use old clips so i don't know because it's such an old project like i'm gonna use some old shit and i would hope that kids that never even heard of josh alkin will watch the video and they oh will, hell yeah they will not know the difference you know what i mean and dude there's one more, clip the, of josh of that i want to see so bad well yeah it's like now it's just kind of like making a piece you know so uh, i'm not so worried about like oh that was abd it's like yeah yeah but it's ours like i shot it with him it's ours we get to decide if we want to use it we're going to put it in the video it's going to make the video better make it a, a lengthier watch time you know and uh it's a time capsule like a, it's a it, it, like a tangent i don't know like so you're talking about nobody has dvd players i don't have a dvd player i'm working on a dvd and i'm maybe gonna make a hundred copies like it's nobody has it's like collectors at this point hard copy bmx archive out there in texas like yeah, waiting for it yeah he and, comes he came <laughs> off, uh, what's yeah. he like he's a good dude he actually is like younger but like fucking well-headed and yeah he, he seems had, super nice it, it, it's so fucked up like his family had like a natural disaster like a tornado like took down his sister's house or something damn where he was like staying and the first thing i felt bad because like the first thing i said was i was like are all the dvds okay <laughs> for real though that's i mean that's a valid question first of all you should have led with like are all the people okay and then we can go to the tv no, we, knew, we knew that first but i was <laughs> up with that collection oh dog. shit is your sister okay and then follow up with dvds <laughs> no nah, he actually he has like a real big passion for it he just loves bmx and it's dope because uh that's a rare thing for especially young like younger kids yeah it's super but, rare and i see him leaving comments of like people need a full all right on the clip of casey sterling or starling i think it's starling yeah it's starling I have I have him on my wall. <laughs> Shout out Casey. Uh, uh, when the, like I saw I saw a comment on a clip from him it's saying true. the world needs a full DVD part from Casey, and I'm like I couldn't agree more. But also like full DVD part, just give him a video part and then put it on the internet. But also yeah. even that seems like what there's so many things I want to talk about. So if you mentioned ABDs. <laughs> How do you like, and I kind of agree, like a couple of years ago, I started really not caring because there's so much shit that's gone down on every single spot that it's like, it doesn't matter. Just do your thing. Like, unless it's like super blatant and like somebody did something super special. I don't know. I don't, I think, I don't know. I can't speak for everybody, but I, I think it matters less now than it did seven years ago or 10 years ago. What do you think? I mean, ABDs and like reposting clips are like two different things. I just want to say that because you just kind of sparked my brain, you know, 
with how uh, you could just post a clip now from like eight years ago and be like, remember this? Mm -hmm. Nobody cares, you know? So what's the fucking difference if you put a clip from like David, like if, like David Grant was supposed to have a section in 1235. And then there was like homie shit and falling out and like a whole bunch of shit that happened, right? But I am intending to like re-edit his Raider promo. You know, and just yeah. give him give him a section. Yeah. It's what it was meant to be. It was, it was meant to be his section anyway, but he needed footage for his Raider promo. So you know what I mean? And I'm just kind of in a place where I just don't care anymore. If that makes sense. You would understand that, right? Yeah, it's it's wild that it came out in 2013, the Raider promo. Yeah, that's ten years ago. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally ten years ago. Oh man. Man, and then like 2015, they're reposting it. Like this is incredible. Blah blah blah. Right. Yeah, David Grant's kind of fucking legendary. What what um? Westcott had like three sections for 12:35 already because he's he lost, the most productive. He lost sponsors, and then we would just put out his footage like in Gully edits. Like it would just be called like Gully Factory Jeff Westcott 2000 whatever. Right. So he could just get a new sponsor. So like I if if there's some gangster ass really well filmed clips in those edits like I'm gonna use them again. That's basically what I'm telling you. Fuck yeah, and as you should. I would like it's timeless DBG's writing because it's spots, setups, and classics. Like he he really is timeless. It's pretty great. Um, what's the homie shit that happened with him? Remind me. You guys, oh, well, you guys beefed and it, then he moved away. David just is like a complicated character and he he was living at the house at one point and you know this was a time when everybody was I mean young and dumb speaking for most of us not you Bobby you little rich fucker <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know everybody's broke right so like everybody's broke and people would come and live at that house and not pay rent while they were gone you know they would yeah. only come when they were there and so i had to like press david and be like hey well if you're gonna leave for like four months like i gotta rent your room out it's just i have to yeah and he was like all right bye so he just dipped and i didn't talk to him for like a year and a half or something damn yeah yeah that roommate stuff too that'll that'll do it like living with somebody is a surefire way to either become even if you are best friends, you're still going to beef <clears throat> like roommates where the relationship gets taken to the next level, you know? Well, it sounds like I'm fucking trashing David or no, you know, taking a high road. But in reality, the whole thing is that the more people that, you know, technically, like it's unfortunate, but like the more people that, you know, like the more people you're going to fucking probably lose, whether they die or you just have fallen out. Yeah. And, and that's the problem, you know, like BNB being BMXers, you just know so many people. Eventually, you know, it's just like you're like, oh, okay, I I know fucking like four hundred people personally. <laughs> like fucking directly I know four hundred people that I would call like family. It's more than like some people have on their Instagram, you know? Yeah. Um then that that's gonna lead to just like that type of shit and you just it sucks but i've been you know it's part of to, life yeah you're just like ah fucking i i have no time to deal with that shit right now yeah and me and david talk again which is awesome so Fuck yeah what's he up to uh he lives in indiana still i believe he's got a dog he road he does like road bikes and shit sick crazy fucking long distance shits with I, I don't even know it seems like he has a crew of homies he hangs with road bike homies yeah he seems happy like you know that's what's up is. at the end of the day that's all that matters it's like i call so many friends and i could talk to them like like you like me and you would be on the phone for like 45 fucking to an hour yeah i don't do that with david but in the sense of when i like exchange memes and like weird shit with him yeah you know that like we're still friends but i really don't know shit about them <laughs> <laughs> i love that and that's like I, I don't know that might be just i i don't know like that i was i'm 
I was biting my tongue on saying this dude shit because I think dudes can be homies with somebody and not know what the fuck's going on with their life and just be like, yeah, that's my boy. And then my girl will ask me like, so like, what's his deal with this? And I'm like, no fucking clue. <laughs> like, I have no idea about his life, but I love him. Yeah, we keep, yeah, that's like some, certain people I'd be like, oh, I know everything. And other people I'm like, fucking, I don't know, man. Yeah. Certain people are very elusive. Like David is an elusive person. He oh, yeah. Never like. I, I don't know. You could just stare him in the face and you're like, I have no idea what he's thinking. <laughs> yeah. That's real. Fucking weird. Yeah. Um, all right. So that was ABDs. And then there was. Um, How are we in? The, what was the other thing in that list? Fuck. It's only been five minutes. I forgot. Anyway, uh, I am curious about what your life has been like living in Austin. I know you're doing stand up. I know you're doing uh contracting. What's uh what's Maloof been up to? Oh, fucking we were looking at <clears throat> you did this podcast before 4 years ago, which is hilarious and it's a why I started watching it and I was like cringing at young me in my parents' house with my headset on watching it, but it's cool. Welcome back. Yeah, wearing blue light blockers. Not before you had the blue Oh, before I had the fancy lights in the background, yeah. Lamps and shit. And before doing it actually consistently. Um, so yeah, still still doing it on Zoom. What's, pro- what's pro- life in Austin like? Catch catch me up, dog. Um, I haven't actually been here for very... Like, recently I was just gone for two months, so I just got back. So Where were second, you? second half of my summer was um opposite snowbird like it gets hot here so i leave do you still pay rent yeah yeah <laughs> that's the way she goes yeah <laughs> that's the way the world works good question it, it's funny because it feels like a dickish <laughs> thing to do but you were the landlord at that time so it's like business is business and then i also love you but you have to pay rent even though you're gone sorry we're all broke it sucks yeah, we had a roommate here that didn't want to pay utilities when, they, and it was just like the most laughable. What? Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna out them, but I bet everybody who's listening knows who they are. <laughs> That's the unfortunate side of BMX. You get to a level and you're known worldwide, but you're broke as shit. It's so crazy. Well, it's yeah. just the concept of like, dude, fucking nowadays. Remember when internet was like thirty bucks a month? That's like ten each. Yeah. Not like, bad. You know? Yeah. So if you go away, who's going to pay the fucking internet? It's still 90 bucks a month. That's not our problem. That's everybody's problem. Yeah. So I'm getting heated. But, uh, you know, <laughs> like, start screaming. It's not our problem. Well, you know that like, my roommate is Penguin and he's <clears throat> Alex Hammett of the fucking Bush Heavy Boys fandom. And. <laughs> He's a fan of himself. Leg- legendary status. I'm yeah. Such a fucking beast. But yeah, I don't know, man. I moved to Texas and got in good with like a good group. But me and Alex, like we hold down the house. And then this middle room just has been an in and out situation. So we've had everybody from like Reed Stark to fucking female roommates to my friend Pascal, who's from my hometown in Illinois. Uh... Ben Allen now lives there, who's like, you know, 20 year old Sunday. Yeah. We love Ben Allen. Yeah, yeah. He's a good dude. He's calm as fuck. He barely makes a peep, just rents a room. Boom. It's like, we got a goat. I got a dog. What's your dog's name? Randall. Randall. Yes, sir. What's the goat's name? Benny. Benny and Randall. Yeah, yeah. We got two Bens. And then I call Alex Penguin. Yeah, it's just fucking animal house. Short for penguin, as I call him Gwen. So we got two pen, uh, two Bens and a Gwen. <laughs> Gwen, dude. And I just live in, uh, dude. I like my life is a sick. <laughs> yeah, it is. You're living a TV show. I love it. For real. Uh, what was the initial move out there? What happened with Fit? I just watched your Fit Pro part, and it was awesome. And you brought, I it felt like you brought, you know, the homies together while you were in Long Long Beach, like seeing the. Sauce filming a clip, and I think it was Francis giving you love, or somebody else giving you love on that, on like one of those bangers. And I was like, "Hey, he's bringing everybody together, Tony." 
What happened yeah. there? Is that um, your last BMX job? Fit, and then you moved on. Uh, right, do you consider yourself retired from BMX? As a rider, yeah, I guess I would have to be. I mean, I could go pro tomorrow, dude. No problem. We should. We should probably play bike again. I could just start a company tomorrow and make myself pro. It's that easy. <laughs> <laughs> She's retarded. It's hilarious you playing with your hair while you say that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I let my hair down. I, I could just start a company tomorrow, dude, and go pro. It almost sounded like Mata right there. Oh, dude, Mata. I love his voice. Nothing uh, funnier than when he was, like, giving directions to um, – Dave Sowerby, when we were on, ah, shit, what was that? Any which way? Any which way, precisely, yeah. The BSD trip that was in Arizona and California and France and all the shits. And uh, <laughs> Joey Mata would just be over Dave Sowerby's shoulder and just like, you're going to go and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do it. I'm going to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Take the 17 last. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, fucking Dave Sowerby's fucking super Scottish. So he's like, oh man, I wish that I could just set the sat nav to Joey's voice. Like, <laughs> yeah. you're going to take a laptop. And here. It's like, that back then, it wasn't even like a council in the head unit. It was like an actual tom tom, you know? Yeah, like, like a separate piece. Right. And <laughs> it had different voices and accents and shit. Yep. He goes, oh, I wish I could set the accent to Joey Mata's voice. <laughs> it's oh, a unique man. thing. He just got left right here. Dude, what is it? Why is he fucking on my fucking... <laughs> Dude, I don't know, because I just I podcasted <laughs> with his brother. And his brother does not talk like him. No, and... it took so long, though, to, for John to even, like, talk. What do you mean? I, I listen to that, and I rarely listen to your podcast. Spoiler. Yeah. Um, Who cares? <laughs> I know. I, I was listening, though, and I was like, God, John, start talking. And then I skipped, like, 20 minutes, and he finally was like, when he sits up, I saw his body language. Yeah. He opened, started to loosen up. Yeah. You know, though, I, like, I know John, so I was like, oh, he's barely talking. And then when he started talking, I was like, there he is. Yeah. He's, uh, he's a specimen, dude. I think the Matas are a special family. It's wild. Oh, they are fucking one in a million. Like nobody, nobody quite like them, and super talented. Like Joey, Joey and I went out to get a clip for mediocre, and he hasn't touched his bike in six months. But he took me to this ledge that like starts this high and then ends fucking way up here, and he feebles it, feebles it, feebles it. He wants to feeble crank flip over this bush. I'm just like, dude, this is fucking like. If I haven't ridden in six months, there's no way I'm going to just come out the gates and go top speed at a ledge and yeah. take a huge drop over and over again. But <clears throat> you've seen him. You know the deal. Like a circus character, honestly. That's what I felt like. I never, I like, I felt like I was part of the Gully Factory, but like you guys became this crew of like killers. And I was never really a killer. I was like a jibber and a chiller. And it felt like Joey blended right in because he had that same mindset of like, I'm chilling until I'm killing. And, and it's just like, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to feeble off of this roof. And it's just like, I don't have that in me at all. And I wish I could kick it with you guys, but I, I don't think I'm cool enough. You know, you guys were the cool kids when you were living here. Did you Let's... get in the fucking van in the morning or whatever the fuck we were doing? And Joey would just be like, mm, we should just go to 41st and fucking. <laughs> <laughs> And he would be like, why? And he's like, I'm going to do this today. I've been thinking about it for four months. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yep. And then he's, he's over there. He's just like the, you know, the party supplier. We're Dude, we jump, would do that. Jumping off the roof. Like, like, J.E. did that shit. Also, you know, he'd wake up, J.E. would just like for five days in a row, he'd be like, I don't want to ride. I'm chilling. I don't want to ride. I'm watching the game. I'm just going to chill. Whatever. I got work. And then one day he's just like smoking a cig and you're like, where should we go? And he's like, I'm going to go do the fucking. <laughs> the Bell Banks. The Bell Banks. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, dude. I want to see it so bad. He'd be sucking in nicotine just like. 
if I don't do it today, I never will. And you're like, <laughs> that's my boy. Yeah, it was like, it was like we were going to ride BMX, but it was also like an episode of True Detective. It was just like <laughs> intense as fuck. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go do this shit right now. Yeah, <laughs> There's a thing about this town. It feels like nobody's been here and everybody's been here all along. That's Everybody some, some Matthew about. McConaughey shit. Everybody talks about it, but never does it. And guess what? Today's the day. <laughs> and J.E. would just be like, I'm gonna go get a Baja Blast. <laughs> <laughs> Man, such good times at that house, dude. He was Tell- like lack of Lactose intolerant, he would be like, I'm going to go get a fucking cheesy gordita crunch and just shit my pants. <laughs> Embraced it, dude. Dude, that's kind of worth it. Cheesy gordita crunch is delicious. Yeah. Uh, but for people that don't know, tell the story of that house. Because you had quite the era of Arizona BMX. Yeah. I mean, most people went through there. Yeah. Like it was a it was a hub, and it wasn't it wasn't like it was like in Phoenix. It was like in the suburbs in Peoria, but it was pretty. It was like across the street from one of the most iconic spots, and then. Bro, I found that spot. Let's be honest. Did you? Come on. I'm not sure. Maybe you did. I'm trying yeah. to. I can't remember like where I first <laughs> saw that spot. My name is Sputnik. I think it's the first. Um. Those are the first clips of that spot. And they're like, they're a tripod. I filmed them myself. So yeah, you can fucking swallow. Did you know that I had a hand in getting Joey Mata on Sputnik back in the day? No. We went to Interbike together. Off though, right? What's that? It was after I was off, right? I don't know. No fucking clue. I don't think, yeah, because they had like yellow cranks. One of my favorite clips for 1235 that's unreleased. Uh, to, to be announced is Joey crank flipping like that 13 stair that oh has... yeah yeah we've we've seen it in the trailer over the past 10 years oh thanks Bob <laughs> I've got his eyes on him I've seen it in the promo that's a, I've never actually biked on that spot that's no but I just always thought it was cool to have somebody that was known for doing crank flips to have yellow cranks like like fucking nobody yeah. does. sticks I, out that clip is fucking dope and um, like it's 10 years old and people still don't do it so fucking kids listening if you're listening put some yellow cranks on them crank flips but it seems yeah, like yeah. almost everybody's doing them now i mean so your dad's fucking neon uh <laughs> what do they call it fucking when you're tracking the yard look at your what? line steal your dad's fucking line paint from... oh yeah do your cranks neon orange Fucking um slow dude. Oh, so like the way I met you was actually through Cleon. Let's I did yeah. we talk about this in the last who cares? Tell me just I want to hear the story about the house. Your dad owned this house as an investor or something? My dad, my dad was involved in the company that built that subdivision. Nice. So he was basically like vice president of a home building company and they built that subdivision. It, Anybody that knows Arizona or Nevada, any of those places, it's like cookie cutter fucking. Yeah. They just make these little HOA areas and every house looks the same or they're mirrored or they're opposite or one's a one bedroom, one's a five, whatever. And uh, so my dad built this one and he kept one or got a deal on it, whatever. So we had like a vacation home in Arizona and eventually fucking you know we got older and less and less usage you know so like my parents like we weren't going on vacations anymore as like kids yeah but i would go there fucking any chance i got i would just go through arizona and fucking have a key and i'd stay there and it was awesome (laughs) it is awesome (laughs) till the point to where i was like Hey, I'm going to rent this place. And, you know, and that's what we did. We just rent. It was, I don't know, four years or something. When did it start? 2010? I can't remember the exact year. I could probably go through old hard drives and find like exact dates, to be honest. But 
Yeah. It's like 2010 ish, 2011, 2012, maybe. First time that I stayed there was when I was passing through and like potentially almost having like my first manic breakdown almost on some John Mata shit. But if you remember, I like stayed there for like two months and Pascal came and got me. My friend. Yeah, and I don't like, remember this at all. No, that's like <clears throat> that's like a bunch of people kind of like flew out and hung out and then left. Like we didn't live there, you know. Like Westcott flew out, Je flew out. The boys. Even like even young and retarded, we didn't live there yet. Oh no, I, kidding! I don't think so. Yeah. So young and retarded is a the come up video, and that was that was it's a banger. How many views? That's a huge one. Yeah, that was before the word retarded got banned. Yeah, now it's coming back. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of coming back. It's like edgy, funny to use it now. And I, like honestly, you use it. I I use it, and it's just like don't be an asshole and call somebody who has Down syndrome. <laughs> but even that, like I saw just on, on an episode of Kill Tony, <laughs> you just fucking let it rip on a Down syndrome kid. I was like, God damn, dude. Yeah, yeah. three hundred thousand views on Young and Retarded. I That's love crazy. that. Honestly, I think it's fucking beautiful. It is. Shane Gillis explains it pretty well. Yeah, he loves banking off that. I would too, dude. It's good bits. Yeah, are you hating on Shane Gillis? No, I'm saying he just loves like he because he kind of looks like he has. Yeah. <laughs> he has so a he, bunch of bits about it. Yeah. He likes to just go there. Have you seen the one where he talks about um? When he goes in the handicap section at like a football game. Yeah, telling that story. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's so good. <laughs> everybody, I think everybody went to high school with somebody like Shane Gillis. Yep. Or like Justin Spreet, you know, like. Yeah, he is Justin Spreet, just a little bit taller. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Young and Retarded was so good. I'm watching it right now. Stevie writing spots that I grew up on. I used Lana Del Rey. Liam. Yep. Slapper dappers. And then I used Portis Head too. I was like. It was yeah. ahead of its time. And then you had Brock from Aussie Land. How did that all. Fuck, there's so many things to talk about. Uh, finish the story with your house, I guess, and then we'll come back to Young and Retarded. Oh, damn. I mean, the house was just fucking awesome. I mean, it was perfect for how it went down. There were so many plans that didn't get done, though. Like, it had major potential. And we didn't do all of it, you know, but that's how shit goes. Yeah. Uh, how were the parties? I remember a legendary moment I had where I came over and I was trying to impress you guys and I was in college and I was just like, I got waves, let's do it. And I brought like, literally like a couple girls would come over and hang out with us and then like they would leave and then I'd bring over the next wave of girls. And I think I did three waves of girls from college to come kick it with the boys. In one evening? Yeah. I don't, like it's all a blur, but... I, that just came back to my mind right now. I had the, my legendary moment there. I had sex in your pool. That was awesome. I think of one of them. Would you call any of them right now? I uh, I remember maybe like two names from it. I have no fucking clue. Uh, yeah, it's it's all a blur. My twenties in college and up until a couple of years ago, where I started taking care of myself a little bit, it was all a blur. It was a really fun blur. Oh yeah, no, especially too. I remember. I kind of remember going to your house in Tempe and almost doing the same thing because I was like, "Big pimping." Oh no, yeah, was like I could just bring whoever the fuck here and and then never talk to him again. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of the vibe. It was, it's like a mystical experience, you know? Like, come on, because like a girl would be, you know, blown away by like how cool these BMX kids are and there's yeah, alcohol yeah. and like we're working on stuff. Like, it is cool. I remember it because I had that. Not like I'm impressed as a girl, but I remember the reason I film now is because I was hanging out with you guys at that house and I came over and I'm a little bit like looking up to you guys like, oh shit, that's Tony Maloof and Jeff Westcott. I've seen them on Vital BMX and all this shit, you know, and you guys wow. are, that's like, you know, that's where I started sweating people. I, I remember seeing, I saw Josh Bentley, Drew Hosselton, Tony Maloof, Jeff Westcott. Like I just started getting into the BMX web video shit and you were like a powerhouse of just putting shit out. The Gully Factory was big in my eyes. And just seeing you and it was in the evening and you and Westcott were sitting at the kitchen table across from each other, both with your laptops, both editing shit or capturing footage. And I was just like, 
that's so fucking cool i want to do that and then i did that for yeah you're gay 12 years after that <laughs> <laughs> i had i was gay for you boys i know i know i know i i respect that you were like uh protege i guess uh <laughs> you know cause it's like <clears throat> jeff, like you were interviewing jeff k the other day and there was that clip that we posted but um yeah it's like so funny to think like i looked up to jeff k i was like oh my god i can't believe these guys can like make videos and put them online yeah and so he's then, he's your maloof and you're my maloof yeah you were like you would like come to our house and you know yeah. me and we, me, Westcott, and Mata, and like this whole like it was kind of like everybody's like either making coffee or like making like a healthy like breakfast sandwich or like a smoothie, and then like rolling a little bit of weed or something and capturing tapes. And you were just there, and you were like, "I want this." I, oh, I get it's so it. cool, I, <laughs> dude. I get that. I get that for sure. I look back on it though, and I'm just like. I should have covered your eyes. But. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> this is a terrible road to go down, Bob. You put more energy into this, you're not going to get any money. Yeah, dude. But you're also, like, that's just being old and jaded. Like, I get free spam from GT, and I'm like, <laughs> Bob, Bob, that's not that good. <laughs> I guess you can't choose what you fall in love with. Yeah, you can. No, it's, it's cool, though. I mean... I, I used to look up to so many different, like, even to this point, I'll bring up, like, Walter, and I'm like, I fucking love Walter's shit, and some people will say they don't, and I'm like, well... It's beautiful, man. Yeah, Walter's stuff is absolutely immaculately, like, well-colored, well-framed. Like, composition is insane, and he's yep. perfect, and he's there, and he shows up, and he's so professional, and nowadays, you know, like, you know, you could watch like these video contest things and it's like, oh, here, watch eight videos and like six of them are trash. Yeah. They're all like bro cam. And you're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, it's you know? interesting. Like the, the role of the filmer isn't as I don't see as many kids like taking up that and taking it serious. I mean, this is no offense against Eddie C because he killed it on that Barcelona cult video. Yeah, that was fire. Um, some but, some shaky parts, Eddie, but it was fire. There's right. some parts where I was like, we need a gimbal here yeah. or something. Oh, he's listening. Um, no, like, but if he's like the best one out of like a contest video, that's kind of fucking weird, you know? Sure. What do you think? Go on. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I think a contest oh, is like, yeah, submit, no, submit your shit. Who cares? Yeah, and then the, and then you go and watch the other fucking maybe the other videos that look better. It's like obviously these people want to fucking suck on Rich Foreign's cock. <laughs> yeah, I mean I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna sugarcoat a fucking thing, dog. Like you can, you know, get a new lens and shoot all these close ups and black and whites. It's like it's obvious. Just. Yeah, Rich did something special with whatever the hell he did. He set the bar. He made his own thing, and then it's obvious when people try to emulate it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And, you know, the HD stuff. Oh, that's what we were going to talk about. We were going to talk about the how to film lines thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we talked about that off air, but yeah, let's do it. Like we mentioned that we were going to talk about that. I had just, yeah, I, I still would skate. Fuck yeah, me too. Who wouldn't? Two skateboards or fucking a bike and a skateboard or run half of it or whatever. Yeah. Before... Oh, I used to love that. Like to like plan out. I don't care that enough to like put the effort into it anymore. Honestly, like I'm out and I'm like, all right, let's get this clip. And I'm either stationary or filming long, but like planning out a long elaborate line of it's like, all right, I got to kick my board up here and run up these stairs. And then also drop, drop, like hop on the board again and keep it smooth. Like, it feels like a, you know, a sport almost the, the filming of it. And it's like high effort, especially if it takes like 30 tries and you're fucking exhausted, but you get it. And it's the best feeling ever. Kind of miss that. I miss caring more about that. I don't care that much to give it that much effort anymore, but I, those are the good days, you know, in comparison though, like if you were doing gimbal, right. And you were running. Yeah. 
we were relying on some fucking robot and then mm-hmm. and it does that goofy shit right and it it's obvious you can tell well like if it does it then you're like oh fuck that wasn't even me i'm like it's I'm oh you mean like when the gimbal starts glitching and just yeah 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 and so like like i get more mad i'd be more i don't know it's hard because i'm so i get pissed at myself so like if i fuck up because i did like i'm pushing on a skateboard and you can see it yeah you fucking dickhead <laughs> everything's else it's crazy the bar you set for yourself especially knowing like how a clip should look and then if you come short of that mark you're like i fucked it up and then you show that clip to anybody or a young filmer they're like this is fucking perfect you know and they see your foot in the clip for from pushing because you're filming behind you or whatever and it's like that almost makes it better the imperfection is nice yeah if it was all perfect it would be like a robot did it well yeah and that's the thing is like <clears throat> like gimbal like does one of those like zzz, zzz, zzz. oh yeah if I was filming and running with a gimbal and the, and the fucking and that thing did it, like I would want to fucking smash it on the ground. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was just doing this freelance shoot for a company, and it's just like interior shots, and I have the FX3, and the stabilization of the in body is pretty damn good, so I can just like walk, and it's pretty fucking smooth. But then I'll change the stabilization to be like off, and then put it on the gimbal, and then I gimbal it, and then it's still got some shit in and I'm like fuck you fucking gimbal you know and I gotta turn it's it's a frustrating thing they're cool but it is what it is um it almost made I, I don't know because like I'm really hard on myself when I fuck up and like the the dude lands it you know what I mean oh yeah that's the worst you're filming it perfect for fucking an hour and then <laughs> they and then they land it and you fuck it up and you're like oh fuck yeah dude you you're look not at even them. stoked for them. You're like, congrats on landing that shit. I like kind of look at them. And you're like, you happy with it? And they're like, dude, that felt perfect. And you're like, fuck. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no. You want to do it again? No. And then, but like you said, they they don't even see it. You'll be like, oh, there's that little jump right there when I go over that crack. And they're like, I don't see it. And you're like, yeah. And nobody sees it. Like a very small percentage of the people who watch it. Like that's the thing. I think that's why there's not that many filmers because like you watch stuff for the writing like and I I see the filming and stuff but I tune it out especially if it's bad I just watch the writing and that's what we all really care about at the end of the day is just like good biking so it's almost like filmers are not a I mean yeah they're (laughs) that's why nobody has an in-house videographer anymore like Beach is gone uh Chabuk's gone from Sparky's Uh, Kramus is the only one holding it down like in house, who's who else is in house? Do you know? I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty sure Benthian's gone from Fit, right? Oh yeah, yeah. He's doing real estate stuff. Shout out Benthian. Of course. The next move. Um... <laughs> it's the logical next step. <laughs> the BMX filmer, <laughs> real estate content, and then figure the fuck out. Yeah, wait till you guys see Reed's new video. It's a logical next step for you, Reed. Um. <laughs> Explain yourself. What are you saying? What is Reed's next video? Oh, we made his 10 year uh, BSD video. Wait, is that the shit I've seen? He's now been on BSD for 12 years. Yeah, I was so. going to say that hasn't come out yet. Yeah, it has not yet. Dude, that's so good. I, I remember watching it in my living room when he sent it to me. That's so fire. Yeah. He, so he's not in love with it or what? That would probably be, I don't know what you got. Did you ask me the last BMX thing I did? That's probably the last BMX thing I did. I did not ask you that, but I appreciate that answer. That's good. Uh, okay, you rubbing your dimples there? <laughs> Who else is a in-house BMX videographer? I want to think, I think of Peter Adam, but he's like freelance. He does shit all over. Grant C is also freelance, so just hustling. Grant C is probably the hardest working BMX videographer in the game right now. Like, yeah, every Good. time I see he, every big event, he's there filming for somebody, and then he's constantly out and he's constantly nerding out on BMX stuff. Like, he is in it, dude. He loves it. Definitely. And he'll he'll message me every once in a while. I love I love his spirit. He's still got it. He's like our age, right? Maybe even older. He's like a year or two older than me. Maybe. Yeah. So thirty four, thirty five, six ish. I don't know. Um, yeah, he's definitely big. 
at all the events. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> He's a large man like me. Well, when, when, do it. Yeah. Dude, you guys are the ones that need to be masked out of fucking long lines. <laughs> So let me ask you the question first, Tone. Do you think that it's appropriate to use the masking effect to hide the filmer in a clip, or do you prefer to leave a filmer in the clip? I say leave them, and I also like like sharing angles. That's like a huge thing that people kind of get butthurt about, but sharing angles. Yeah, like you know, like when a trick's going down, and you're like, "Are you gonna shoot fish?" And they're like, "Well, I wanted to." And there's a filmer and a photographer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like so obvious that you can only really shoot the trick from one place. So you guys might as might as well be become like fucking conjoined twins. Oh, yeah. Big time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You, you, I love that. Because then like in between goes, you're just talking shit with the photographer. Like it's the best. Well, no, it's just like it's just fucking known. Like there's other times too where it's like oh i'm gonna go up on the roof and you can have this spot and it's like cool talk to you in 30 minutes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there are times when you're shooting a trick and it's like it's obviously a fish trick and we have to shoot it from this uh, this is the only way i'm you know and you immediately thinking of wes yeah you're just like double right there yeah. and and somebody's gonna come up to me where like if i'm the filmer i'll be like oh do you guys mind if i'm in the shot and i go absolutely not i don't care you know i think it's dope i think it's dope to have the filmers in there because then when print was around it was like dope because you could like go to the magazine and be like oh that's sick that's the photo they shot when i saw the clip in the video right. and yeah tear it up. damn remember when magazines were a thing remember magazines <laughs> dude are we old what is this Jesus Christ, dude. We're just doing a bunch of members. <laughs> member? Uh, yeah, I member. Dude, we're just doing a bunch of math. members. <laughs> That's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> we're just doing a bunch of meth. We're just doing meth, dude. Just talking. Um, No, dude, it was sick, though, when, when people didn't care. And then, you know, like Adobe and the uh, the Premiere Cloud and all the shit started getting better. Everybody would, like, mask the shit out. Which I get. Super easy to do, yeah. Yeah, it's super easy to do. Especially. You know what? I do get mad because Lufa will shoot a photo and then he'll be like, Bob, move. And I'll be like, all right. And then I have to get out of it and he takes a photo of the spot and I'm like, fuck you, dude. You're going to remove me yeah. from this from this photo. Yeah, no, I know. I've definitely had it all the time. Especially when you're fucking just crushing it, shooting fish, and you're like, lose. Yeah. And Properly, like, too. I'm not a goofball like, hey, out are here. You, are you yeah. scram? And you're like, <laughs> yeah. you don't want to see me just looking fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, like fucking. <laughs> I remember thinking it was so fucking cool to be the camera guy. Like, I think it's still cool, but I used yeah, to like yeah. sweat yeah, it yeah, and like afro though, like fucking beagle. Oh yeah. But he always like wanted to be beagle. Mm -hmm. No, I mean you always wanted to be beagle. You know what I'm saying? You painted your VX people, and shit. A lot of people did, but of he course also, he had a fucking. PR 900 and you know i mean even westcott is on the cover of tattoo instead of me so fucking what do you mean why he's i think drew york's doing a 180 bar spin and westcott is there with a trv with a fucking fish eye yeah I mean, it's like a baker cover but it's me and miles paid for that whole trip <laughs> West westcott Deserves some shine for how fucking good he is at filming. Like I don't think I don't think enough people know Westcott's a damn good filmer. Like fish eye fish eye game on point. No doubt. Good filmer all around. Was always around and And just we, fucking Mr. Consistent. Like he's older than both of us, right? Yeah, he's like I think. <clears throat> and still health fit as a fiddle. And uh, he can come out like if, if we Westcott flew him out, he could get clips like nobody's dude. business. Westcott is cut. Like Yeah, unreal. We call it RNS. I can't say it on the internet anymore, but he's ripped. What'd you say? RNS? Yeah. Okay, I'll Google it. It's not a thing you can Google, huh? It's probably out there. <sighs> All right. RNS, dude. You're going to make me live Google R and S. I hope it comes up because I bet you can't even say it. Reschedule <laughs> real shit. 
slang, no. rat stuff, real no. shit. Nope, 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 nope. For fit. Dude, I have to know. Ugh, you literally yeah. can't say it? Grip blank syndrome. RNS? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can't say it. <laughs> R I thought you were saying R and S. <laughs> Basically, West guy just came out of the womb just fucking cut. Some people do have R and S for sure. <laughs> it feels wrong even saying R and S. Oh man. Anybody listening, go fucking do your homework and <clears throat> and don't fucking add us. <laughs> just I'll call Clay Johnson and have him say it. Yeah. Oh, he got that R and S. <laughs> Yeah, he'd be like, y'all are good. It's all good. I'm... That's fine. He'd be like, Westcott does have R. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I, I, you know, you don't want to discredit Westcott for taking care of himself because he, he, he did get on it. I remember he was like thicker, barely. He was never like a big fat fatty, but uh, he, he got some, some beer weight and he still know. enjoys his beers, but like he, he wasn't ripped as he is right now back, back in the day, like 10 years ago. I don't remember oh, before we move on, though, I've just I want to elaborate on me bringing up West McGrath, but he's he's a slithery, slithery Mr. McGrath, and he's a fucking beautiful ball of sunshine. But he'll be shooting a photo of a trick, and he's like n almost invisible because he's, he's tiny and he's just laying down. His dreads take up some space, but he's just literally flat on the ground. Jeff Z too, like just hiding in a gutter, shooting a photo to get the right angle with the reflection off the water. Oh yeah, like Jeff C has been in the game for so long. Like a, he was on road trips with Edwin in Arizona, you know, t twenty years ago. What do you think about the the differential of like lens knowledge as opposed to like? I mean, you think that like everybody in extreme sports angles they they fall in love with the fish first, oh, yeah. right? So, yeah, like, there's like a whole art like within lenses. There's like techniques and stuff. But like within fisheye, it's like its own sport, you know, and there's like whether you're stationary on a staircase or moving along with somebody in a line, there's like things that you have to be doing. Like if they're close to you, you tilt it up to keep them in frame. If they're farther away, you tilt down to so keep their head at the same level and then bring it in. And then how do you finish a line? Are you whipping it away? Are you staying stationary? Like and then even just like within that subcategory of like to end the line, are you staying stationary? Like that's a fucking skill that you're like hyper focused on like all right i gotta stay super still and you're like using your left foot as a brake and your right foot's on the skateboard and you just try and like hold it as still as you can and there's a slight wobble and you're like fuck i blew it but like everybody else is like that's a perfect clip there's and then the framing of it like start the clip on the right side of the screen and have them end over on the left kramis actually explained it last year on this just talking about how to properly use a fisheye but <clears throat> yeah i think that's that's the first I fell in love with that, watching uh, a happy medium and then seeing BMX videos and being like, this could be filmed better. But even like everybody, all filmers go through a fisheye evolution. You were pretty, pretty mastery of the old fisheye. It's like, how do you like you watch some of your primetime stuff, like even just young and retarded? You obviously got better after that still, but you can't really beat some of the fisheye shots in here. I would just say textbook it, it, it's the thing that i learned from walter which we already touched a little bit on but you want it's basically like you want to be stationary until wheels leave the ground yes and then when wheels touch again if you can get to stationary fucking do it it's interesting you saying that while I'm watching Young and Retarded, like seeing so, fish eye clips. Yeah, it's kind of like sometimes there's clips that are too fast where you can't start stationary, so you have to come in and like swoop, you know, and like go mm -hmm. right around the motherfucker and skate a little bit faster. And then that way you can get like a good pace to like meet him at the end and then stop. But primarily like that is the goal, I think, when you're filming fish is to like even if it's just like a sub rail trick, like there's no reason to follow. Yeah. Well, you got to let them exit the frame, you know? And like, I, I think that's the biggest mistake that 
fisheye filmers starting out make is they just get the fisheye they're like this is gonna be sick because it's a fisheye and then they just point in the center of the frame is oh the, yeah look, the it looks time. really it, when you get your first fisheye you're just gonna like absolutely fucking point like a gun and just like, <laughs> yeah. every everything looks awesome and it's that's not the fucking move westcott was actually one of the first people to show me like barrel distortion and how to how to use like rule of thirds and stuff that i learned like like when i went to photography class in high school to uh, ignore other electives yeah <laughs> they would teach me rule of thirds and i would ignore it because i just hated school but then later on i was like oh that's what they were talking about <laughs> yeah you know the best way to learn is by fucking doing yeah man this is on point i haven't watched this legit in probably 10 years this young and retarded video it's pretty great Oh, dude, and I mean, talk about happy medium. You can tell, right, that I completely copied the barrel or uh, the big netting and the sepia tone kind of color. The color, yeah, I could see that. But yeah. no, I wouldn't say. I think it's just really well done, and like you can take influence from somebody without blatantly copying them. I remember Buster. I think I've talked about this with Mastroni. I, I gotta have Mastroni on here. But the only BMX dude that the O'Shea's ever were a little bit salty about was Mike Mastroni. <clears throat> oh, like they thought he, they, they, he they were like, they were like, that's too much. Like, why are you copying so many things? Like it, Mastroni, oh, cause, okay. cause Mastroni was heavily influenced by them and it's still his own shit. Like finer things is fire, but the, you can definitely, oh, you can okay. see, see the happy medium influence. I still remember the feeling of like Hunter O'Shea came to the first mediocre premiere and then his words saying that that was incredible. You did a great job. And it was like your own thing. I was just like, ah, you know, like it felt so special, which is wild. Cause it's all, it's just like, I don't know, as you get older, I start realizing like, Oh, it's all just like kind of meaningless nonsense. It's passion. It's like poetry, you know, it doesn't accomplish anything, but it is important. We have to like present our, thing that we're passionate about to the world and you and I both are came up in privileged enough positions where we didn't have to like immediately stress in our lives about like get your money up like all the like a lot of people have to do of just you can't even think about what you want to care about you have to worry about paying the bills to I think it, I think it's important to to like emulate rather than just like straight rip copy yeah yeah I agree yeah. I gotta uh... I gotta pee give me a second Hell yeah. Oh, it was a good pee, Tony. Thank you for asking. I could hear it. I'm glad you could, off the record. Um, So, I forget what we were talking about, but let's just move on. Let's talk about adult stuff. How are you making money? There. How much? No, you know what I wanted to ask earlier? Is you were talking about roommates. What's your guys' mortgage, or what's the rent that you're paying? Like, could I come move there and be a roommate? Actually, maybe. Uh, our middle room fluctuates a lot. And I don't know. If it opens up, you'll be the first person. Like, call. where? how close are you guys to downtown? Austin. Austin in itself. Nice. Yeah, super close. That's super nice. Right now we have Ben Allen in our middle room. And right, he yeah young man that rides for like odyssey and or wait no uh sunday sorry sunday alienation are you hip to shit do you know um i have a hunch that justin spreet left fit and he's going to be on sunday do you know anything i am under the impression that justin spreet is going to be on a bsd bike Ooh. But I don't think that it's like a deal. I think that he's just getting a bike. And I'm just going to say that out loud. And if I'm wrong, fucking sue me. <laughs> <laughs> sue me. Imagine suing over BMX rumors. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. But I think that he's just going to get a BSD because they're good bikes. And, not, and I'm not saying that Sundays aren't. Just Yeah, I would say Sundays are probably some of the they're best. All, they're all in cahoots because... BSD is with um, Blackout? Oh. <laughs> uh, in America. The Motherfucking whatever the shit. The same place as Odyssey? Yeah, where they do like the red carpet. Full factory. Full factory. Thank you. Yeah. 
So BSD is Full Factory in America, and then Odyssey and all that shit is Backstreet, which is BSD in UK. So they're like the same thing. Yeah. Um, it would make perfect sense to me. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen or what's happening, but as far as I know, going to be riding a BSD soon, I think. Yeah. Just because I talked to Justin and he said he wanted one. And that's all I'm saying. I just, and my shit is just on a hunch out of the blue. I don't know anything. I played Fortnite with him the other night, but aside from that, I didn't even talk about bikes. Dude, Devin Smiley is so good at Fortnite. It is stupid. Like, have you ever seen, like, have you ever tried to play the game? No. No, of course not. He's not a video game guy, everybody, but I'm I'm not a guy i'm like gta and dave mirror freestyle bmx2 like that's it that's as far as <laughs> that's fine I have, i've definitely gone to that house in huntington where i've seen devin smiley like behind the fucking race wheel yeah he's he's a gamer dude i love it shit yeah and i mean the motherfucker can also like bar tap in a contest run so yeah talented it, he doesn't he doesn't lose anything by playing some video games here and there but like Playing with him and just like it, it, we we play a duos game and I end up dying because I'm washed up. I haven't played in years and he's just been practicing. And so he's, I'm watching him and he's building and doing all the editing. Like literally, like if you saw his hands, they're fucking going crazy while he's playing and he's super calm and chill. He's just like, I gotta go. He's kind of Mata on, on video games. He's, I like that guy a lot. Um, but yeah, I was talking to Justin and didn't, didn't, didn't bring it up, but I've talked to multiple people here in Arizona, like, and they're like, so what's Spreet going to do? Where's he going to go? And it's just like a fun, fun drama right now. Not even drama, but fun tea. Like, where's Spreet going to end up? Because he is one of the best bike riders in the world. So I would sponsor him if I was a company. And, yeah. Would, would you? Well, I mean, since we're not like, yeah, since we're not fucking holding any air, I'm going to say anybody that doesn't pick up Spreet right now is stupid. Because it's like, you don't want to it's insulting to go to a rider like in, in like two years from now and be like hey man you should ride for us but we're just gonna give you parts like yeah fucking get him right now he is he's not he's in the hit he's not a mess he's always just you just gotta put him on a plane and he'll go and he'll fucking do the shit he's you know? the best to have on trips personality wise too but also like Funny. gets it gets it yeah, done yeah. yeah he have a little bit like on top of being really good at riding yeah he's all that and then some and that's like the un the intangible one that you've seen like you can be a dope bike rider but once you're on the trip it's just like if you're a dud of a personality it kind of sucks you know but it is what like there's a there's a matrix have you ever seen that meme about the uh, crazy girl matrix like if a girl's this hot she's this crazy type of thing you know what i'm talking about matrix yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Same thing with bike crazy. riders. Like if you're a super dull personality, but you're this good at bike riding, it's okay. It balances out. Yeah. No, he's like for being goofy footed, you know, mm-hmm. like, like he's so good. For being, it's almost like you're like, <laughs> considering that he's below us, he's so pretty people, good. Those are like, like in college, like, you know, and like, when, like in college, they'd be like, People like this only come around every once in a while. I know he's got bad grades. Yeah. But he's a savant. He's fantastic. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you gotta use like some word to to be like, this is the one you gotta put all our fucking coins and chips in on this guy. Yeah. He's fucking You don't find a shit footed rider like this every day. Yeah. He's got fucking one footed tables and look backs and he will fucking crank arm a rail, so you know. <laughs> oh, his dad can fucking do tabletops too, dude. BMX Todd, iconic. No, um, I mean, but but Justin speaks for himself. Like he's he's like good in the van. He's good in you know when you got to share a queen size bed. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good dude, and he just like rips. And he's also been riding for so long. That's why I hope somebody places them but uh, he deserves a place big time i wonder what happened i hate to talk about bmx like it sounds like we're talking about the nfl or like some bullshit but he definitely deserves to be set somewhere 
to get the last he's married and shit now you know mm -hmm. he, he already not to say he doesn't care but it's like he's already like yeah i'm just gonna keep doing fucking dope shit for no reason yeah he's the perfect person to like score another like three years on some team yeah sell bikes sell parts you know what i mean should we call him <laughs> i'll call him right now phone him <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we'll see if he answers but let's it's a canode knows inside scoop let's see what's going on with justin spree and his sponsorship opportunities <laughs> i think i think he's in my phone as j spite yep because you didn't know how to spell his name be honest S P R I E T. Dude, I used to always have. You don't even know. <laughs> you make fun of me. You don't even know. Little girl. Hey, what's up, Justin? You're on the podcast. Hell yeah, dog. Hell yeah, dog. <laughs> so, um, I'm here with Maloof, and we're talking about you, and we'd like to know live what's going on with your frame sponsorship situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, um. Ain't shit, to be honest with you. What kind of bike are you going to be riding in the near future? I'm riding a BSD right now, thanks to good old G Smith. G Smith, we love him. Oh, the baby. I'm on a, I'm on the podcast right now. Yeah, you are. You're on Canoe Knows. This is your first appearance on Canoe Knows. I've been asking you for two, four, five years. That's actually, that's actually false. I do have a an episode. It's about two minutes long. Oh yeah, you do at the wedge, huh? Yep. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yep. Yeah, say hi to Tony. Anything you want to say to the people? What's up, Team Malu? It's my dog. Um, nice yeah, I don't have to say anything. I'm playing Fortnite right now, dude. I'm my guy. I'll see you. I'll see you, <laughs> new, I'll see you new, that new map in about an hour when I'm done with Tony. Let's go. Let's go. Good luck, boy. He brought it up. He's like. You ever play Fortnite? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Tony's not a gamer. Well, you should. Tony ain't no gamer. Tony, you should play. We'll carry you. Tony It'll don't play fun. no games. Tony don't play no games. All right, that's it. All right. Any, uh, luck, any, anything juicy to share? Like any potential things going on? I always thought I it was going to be Sunday. See, you know? What's that? Nah. I said, I guess you'll have to see, but no, nah, no Sunday. Okay. Top secret. See you later. I'm writing for Huffy. Bye. <laughs> He's riding for Huffy Bye. It's a good call. He's on just just rocking a BSD, but no no sponsor coming in. Yeah, those bikes rip, dude. They're so good. Yeah. What do you want to talk about now? Dude, let's go. Bring up something fucking juicy for me, dude. You said juicy. Um what do I want to know? You wanna hear a bit that I got? Yeah. Hit me with a stand up bit. You know what's fucking ridiculous? You know how like women don't like the word moist? Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. It doesn't bother you, right? No. Yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. Things can be moist. And then if you like give them like a really good like like if you like pass a girl like a fucking velvet cupcake, you'd be like, oh, it's so moist. And they don't care. Then they don't care all of a sudden. I can see that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Really whack. Okay. Now, what about the word seep? Never heard anybody talk about the word seep. Are you familiar with the word seep? Yeah. Don't let it seep into your shit. What about seepage? Seepage. That's it. grosser than moist. That's for sure. <laughs> seepage. I think that might be the most disgusting word that exists. <laughs> seepage nothing good seeps like be honest like fucking nothing good seeps no I, i'm immediately thinking of tampons and unprepared women on their periods it's, that's what seeps <clears throat> you reap what you sow you seep what you row <laughs> seeping dude you know how it's seeping? <laughs> what's the bit <laughs> is this the bit this one time i was seeping dude What's the punchline of this seeping moist joke? <laughs> no, just that nothing good seeps. That's, <laughs> that's a, it's a it's a work in progress. 
It's a work in progress. Yeah, we're still going for it. Dude, stand up's just... so brutal. Like, it's a good, fun topic to like come up with jokes on. But I remember this one time I was I was trying to tell a story that I thought was funny, and it was about me breaking my tailbone and my dad saying it was probably hemorrhoids and plug it up. And I sat on the laid on my bed for like twenty minutes with toilet paper up my ass, and I was like, Dad, there's no way this is hemorrhoids. And then he took me to the hospital, but there's no punchline. And then the comic who came up after me was just like. Hey, bro, that was great. That was five minutes, no punchlines, and just fucking, what was it? Ooh, ooh, yeah. Ah, ouch. I was like, he ain't wrong. That's that's for sure. And that's when I was like, yeah, there's that's a there's levels to this shit, you know? Got stabbed and they twisted the knife too. Oh, huh? yeah. And he's killing it. Like, he's touring with Brian Callen and um, Luis Alvarez is his name. He might He's probably been in Austin a bunch too. Cool motherfucker. How's stand-up going for you? I don't really even have a punchline for this one, but I have a dad thing that sucked. Uh, the first time I ever went to my old man, and I was like, hey, I think I might have an STD. He looked at me, and he just said, I didn't do it. <laughs> That's a funny dad comeback. That's really, pretty good. Really what he said, though. He was just, like, shaving in the vanity. Like, and I, was I, didn't, like, I didn't do it. That's a good pop. Good pops. I guess. I can, I can see that's something my dad's saying too. He's My dad would be like, so what? I got them all. <laughs> all right, man, cool. Reveal. Big reveal. <laughs> <laughs> How is stand-up going? Oh, shit. I mean, I don't do it so much in Austin. Austin kind of sucks for it. Cause it's what? Like, Why? It's like too cliche. That sounds like it's in your head. Seems like a great place to do it. Yeah, but it's also anytime you, if you just even say that you do comedy here, people laugh at you. And then everybody, the next comment would probably be like, oh, you should sign up for Kill Tony. And you're like, ha, 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 yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, it's so fucking lame, dude. But lame know. in the sense of like things are actually going on, so you have to be counter cult. It sounds like you're just being like against the grain to be against the grain. Yeah, it was like when I moved here two years ago, it was pretty um clicky, you know, you'd say. And now it, I don't even know if they have a word for it. It's like culty. And it's just you know. Have you gotten fun. to uh bump in have you gone to the mothership? Yep been there a few times i even know some dudes that like used to work door at the vulcan that now work there you know it's like cool you can meet people you know like B- bmxers like we meet people and they understand like oh this guy's cool yeah and recognize your face because you're cool yeah and then just going back and forth it's just a it's a fucking nightmare man like <laughs> when's the last time you got up in austin yeah or in general? Both. I went up about three weeks ago in Tulsa. Damn! Three weeks? Yeah. Go do a mic right now, dude. What are you doing? Yeah, I, the thing is, is like, I kind of started to get to the point where I was not doing open mics, so I was doing sets. Yeah. And, you know, open mics suck. So. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Every once in a while, I'll do them, but I haven't done one in a while. That's like saying, I don't go to the skate park anymore because I only film video, video parts. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I only film bangers, bro. So I film- <laughs> okay, Rob Wise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no more Instagram clips, dude. Only fucking video yeah. parts. <clears throat> I think you well, should yeah, do open mics this week, brother. No, I, I get you, but, you know, it's the same thing. I could go up. You know what's the funny thing, though? I want to talk to you about this because you did it. It's like, people don't learn like like in bmx you always want to film a video part and you want to put up another video part that's better than the last yeah that's the same thing that i like carried on to with comedy so to try to outdo my last set is stupid because i start to see people that just said they've been doing the same set for 20 years oh that drove me nuts i was just like i was seeing other comics do the same shit and it i was like what 
And then it, it was a big learning curve. Like, oh yeah, that is kind of what it is. Like even every big comic that you and I know, they've done the same thing over and over and over again for years. And then it's finally like okay. released it's as a special. I mean, shit for fucking 40 years. Yeah, it's wild. And then like you're making slight tweaks of like the tone on one thing or you add a tag on one thing and it's just like, fuck, it's almost, it seems miserable. I don't want to do that. Um, yeah. So I, but I don't know, the thrill of like saying something and having people laugh, or a whole room of people laugh is pretty fucking epic. Like it's one of the best feelings on earth. Like I've been thinking about it lately. I was like, I want to go do an open mic again and just like write five minutes and see what I can do. Like it's a... Uh, you could totally do it. Yeah, there's not much. I have like so many different five minute sets and I still get self-conscious where I'll be like, oh, I saw that guy in the crowd last night. He's going to see me say the same thing. Yeah, I can't say the same shit I said last night. And You have to get over that, I think. No, I do. Luckily, I'm good at crowd work. But then, you know, you still get off stage and you're like, oh, I had a whole set plan and I said like half of it. Yeah. Like I was trying to like do a whole set and then I go and fucking call some guy out for like a weird shirt. Yeah. And you don't Man, crowd work's a whole nother specialty. I never did a single thing of crowd work in my year of doing stand up. Never never even tried. I, I acknowledged there was the host of this one show that looked like Mitch Hedberg. And so my I got on the mic and I said, it's good to see Mitch Hedberg's alive and doing well. He's just hosting open mics in his backyard. Like it was a backyard open mic and that, that got a big laugh. And then I went into whatever jokes I wrote and there's just crickets for five minutes. And then another stand up came up to me and was like, dude, I love that Mitch Hedberg quote. And I was just like, fuck the one thing that was like off the top of my head, I get a compliment on the, the things I cared about all fucking sucked. <clears throat> it's so humbling. It's the most humbling. I'm sure you've bombed. To where it's just like jesus christ i'm dog shit you know like, it's the worst feeling oh yeah awfully I but it's all it's like uh i don't know going through something hard like that like failing at doing stand-up is like nothing can be worse than that feeling so it's just like i don't care you know you really don't give a shit and then that's almost liberating i'm just like yeah fucking tell me no on a sales call or no you won't i haven't tried to reach out to anybody to like sponsor the podcast ever and i'm just thinking like why not you know i should what's the worst that happens they say no but that applies to everything in life like once you go through the shittiest part you're just like ironclad for the rest of it, it doesn't nothing matters because you're like yeah i've bombed on stage it's fine this is nothing compared to that god it's the worst it's so crazy <laughs> yeah it's tough i guess yeah, it's tough <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's kind of tough dude i definitely bombed like at a show once where I walked in, I was like late. And then they they pulled me up and this other dude was like talking about weed. And I was like, I was just smoking weed. So that's why I'm late, you know? And then like people kind of laughed. And then I just was like, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then I just looked at everybody and I was like, um, I never really pulled my phone out. And looked at my notes before on stage. And I'm not about to. Good night. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's good. And I went outside. See you later. Yeah, but I went outside and I like fucking smoked the rest of my blunt and like just it was shame. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I was just so. standing up against the wall like Jane Silent Bob. Just like I was like, ah, fuck, that was bad. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> the hang is almost almost as fun as like the actual getting on stage part like the the people at open mics are so weird and they're just like either borderline homeless or literally homeless like celia who just had a break on kill tony is was like literally homeless and was chugging people's liquor just to fall asleep on the street type of thing i met so many interesting characters there was this one so they did an open mic at catalina's in phoenix and i would show up and i think i was you know a little late for the sign up and i was like bottom of the list and so I was like, it's fine. I'll just watch everybody else. And then I sat at the bar and had too many drinks. And then I got on stage and I was spinning and I was just like, <sighs> like, <"Whoa." laughs> I, like I, don't, I don't even know what I'm supposed to say. Dad. And just fucking, I, I don't even remember how it ended because I was too drunk, but it was a miserable experience. I was like, this is embarrassing. Talk about embarrassing. It's got to be like almost easier. Like you can, you take somebody who's like established comedian and put them on an open mic, they're going to do well, but it's not going to do as good as like 
an audience that's like wanting stand up. An open mic is like trying to pull teeth. Like people are not there for stand up. There's people in the bar that are like, "What the fuck is this comedy open mic? I was just here to get a beer," and that they're not there for comedy, you know. And it's a, and then yeah. you're performing to other comics. Like a room full of just other aspiring comedians is a terrible audience for stand up. It's a, it's an interesting scene. Lots of yeah, parallels like, between it, BMX and stand up, though. For sure, and the crowd work is definitely uh, you never expect it, but it's also been necessary. Like one time, I was up, and my friend was like, "Can you keep going?" And he was like, kind of hitting me with the fucking carousel, and I was like, "The opposite of the light." Yeah, and I was like, "Ah, fuck, okay." And then like this kid walked through, and he looked like the little black kid from Holes, like you know the movie. Yeah, I was like, "Hey, zero." And I'm just uh, started roasting this kid and you feel bad. But then like the rest of the crowd is kind of like, this is hilarious. <laughs> and then there was this girl in like a, like a Kango hat. And I remember just being like, Hey, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> I was like, Hey, female LL Cool J. Can you come up here? Let's, let's see what you're talking about. And like, just fill in time. And I almost like felt like catfish, you know, like because I like had been around that type of announcer type of vibe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, I just got to fucking fill this like a circus act. I just got to fill this fucking void. Dude, and it's a talent. It's a. It, was, it wasn't hard is what I'm saying. It was easier than like I didn't get to practice any of my material, but it was still like, oh, we're making people laugh. And it's like and then when it was over, people. This that's why I brought this up because you what you were saying is there was a girl after that that hadn't done stand up in like two years, she was like forty three, smacking hot, and she came up to me. Well, she went up after me and then came up to me after her thing, and she was like, "I haven't done stand up in a few years, and I wanted to because I saw you." And I was like, "Oh, really?" I was like, "I thought my shit was like all over the place." She was like. No, that was fun. And I like I you made me want to go up. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Hell yeah. That makes me want to see you. I mean, I obviously already wanted to see you, but I would love to see right, you. But it, is, it makes it fun where like I'm, <clears throat> I just hate when I see some people that look like they're in like book club and they got notepads and shit and Yeah, but those know. are the ones that succeed, dude. <laughs> yeah, but they take their they take your phones and shit at uh kill Tony and all that crazy shit. And those people look like fucking zombies to me, man. Yeah, and, uh, uh, that's I. That's why the dude made the joke about me not having punchlines was because I was talking shit about people with notebooks and a pen and paper, and then he got up and was like, "I got a pen and paper, motherfucker. Where's your punchlines?" You know, I was like, "God damn," you know, like that's uh, <laughs> backfired. Yeah, the one time I went up and uh, well, I signed up for Kill Tony twice, but the one time I was waiting. No, I just got I got so damn fucking sleepy. I was like, I'm not even gonna be funny at this point. I'm just gonna ask him why he won't reissue the fucking damn. He had like a kill Tony shirt, and you know my name's Tony. Yeah. So I was like, at this point, dude, I'm not even gonna make any jokes. I'm gonna just be like, yo, fucking, can you remake those kill Tony fucking shirts, the white and red ringers? Pretty please. Just make one for me, dog. <laughs> like that's all I'm gonna say. I was like, man, fuck this, dude. I don't need to fucking blow up on your podcast. What do you think about that show? I think it's cool. It just, in Austin, again, it's very cliche. Everybody thinks that you have to go there to, like, make it. It's fucking dumb. Feels like a pretty good shortcut. Like William Montgomery, dude. I like that guy. Um, yeah, but you see all those guys, they go back and forth from the Vulcan. Like, I went to the Vulcan last week with a girlfriend, and Tony was just on. We had no idea. Nice. Paid, he paid like nothing. And Tony just came up and was like, he Yeah, I'm just at the Vulcan. Yeah. Yeah, he just did a quick set. It was like, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to the real club, is what he said. <laughs> the mothership. Yeah, but they're just, yeah. they're just talking shit and they're doing practice over there. And you you can get into the to any of those clubs to go see a show but if you want to sign up for any of those open mics and stuff it's like a pretty big headache you got to be pretty much like into it and yeah. like 
There's no half ass in pretty much anything in life, you know? You gotta be all in. That's what I found. Like stand up, I got obsessed and I was all in and I was doing it all the time. And then I hit a point, I forget. <laughs> I think I just stopped drinking for a while and I was like, damn, I'm not funny. <laughs> like I just stopped being drunk and thinking I was funny. No, um, you're, you're funny. It's just you have a career, so you would have yeah, to. Yeah, like, exactly. The people that are getting successful off. in comedy don't have other shit going on. <laughs> You would have to work all day and then go and sign up for that shit. And right. I don't, I don't exactly know what everybody's doing there, but it's, uh, it's a little bit goofy. I don't want to like sound superior, like it's like a beneath me. It's just I've got no fucking patience to do that. I still have fun just doing shows when I can book them. You know. Mm hmm. Fuck yeah. What are you doing for work? Right now, because of the holiday season, nothing. <laughs> My guy, let's go. <laughs> Fucking, so what's your excuse? Go do some open mics, dog. Yeah, like I said, they're shitty here. But, dude, one time I went to an open mic in Austin. <laughs> and we showed up. And I was like, I've never heard of this one. I sh We go there, me and my friend Pasco. And it is like an open mic, like music, fucking banjos, anything you want. Yeah. It is not a comedy open mic. It is an open, open, the most open mic. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, we. I was just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and I hesitated to sign up, and then I got a drink, and then we didn't sign up. But Man, I was hoping that story would take a turn, and you'd actually signed up. and uh, kill Texas. There was a door guy that told me, he's like, you can do stand up. And I was like, yeah, it seems like it's more music. He's like, yeah, but you can go up there and tell jokes. It doesn't matter. And I'm like, that's what's up. I feel like I'm going to be shot. Like, <laughs> that would be a double bomb. You're like, we don't even want you here, comedian. And then you tell bad jokes. Oh, yeah. I wear a bulletproof vest and fucking, I, I knew about it. Let's go. Let's go back to BMX. Let's talk about bikes. Um, give me the two minute summary of your whole career. That's a fun one. Dogs are barking. Two minute summary of my BMX career. Huh? I actually started on a 20 inch bike, went to a 16, went to an 18. Went back to a 20. Then I got a signature bike and a bunch of sponsors, and now I'm 34. <laughs> Fucker, I said two minutes, not 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, though. Yeah, I went to a 16, 18, 20, and uh, now I'm 34. You're older than me, huh? Said I started on a 20. I yeah, went you did. How old were you when you got a 20? I don't know. I guess uh, 11. It was huge. I can't remember when I wanted a 16 and my folks were like pissed. They're like, you want this bike? I'm like, it was like 320 bucks or something like a Haro 16 inch. But I knew that I was like, if I get that fucking thing, I'll be able to rip. Yeah. And it was true. So I got it. And then I was able, I was three in spines and all types of shit, like right away. Did you have basement ramps? Yeah. I remember footage of the basement ramps. God, dude, you've done so much. We could talk for hours about your whole story. What did, do you remember what we talked about on the last one that you were on? Do you want to talk about your whole story right now? Good. I know it pretty well. I mean, you lived it. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, before we get into it, let's talk about when you first met Jeff K because he was just on, and we were talking about the origins of Thug Maloof, um, oh, wow. which I felt questionable about. I was like, "Is that these thugs?" <laughs> the word thug. Um, oh, Jeff had his thug phase too, man. And don't let him fucking fool you. Uh, so how'd you meet Jeff K? We be we were all doing this like. The hat phase. You were a little thug, dude. 
the uh, Gelly Factory. He, I had fucking Cubs hats. He'd have Brewers hats. He's just so such good. a character. Just a short, white, blonde kid with a lisp who talks like a gangster and runs the Gully Factory, dude. <laughs> He's Tony fucking Maloof. With confidence dude, nothing... dripping out of him. And that's... I, I've always been attracted to that with you. You fucking... You're Maloof, dog. You made everything feel okay. Thank you. Um... Yeah, I take that as a compliment. Fuck yeah, as you should. You're the man. I like this camera angle switch. Let's go. <clears throat> All right, pause. You're going to pause it? Yeah. What the fuck do you mean? You want me to sit and wait for you to pee pee? I'm going to go out. I'll be right back too. <laughs> <laughs> there's that, there's that zoom brought again saying recording in progress uh tony how did you first <laughs> it's like i'm reluctant to do this because i'm tired of talking about everybody's fucking life story in bmx it's like well i found bmx and blah 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 but i do want to hear it so tony how did you find bmx and how did it shape your life tell me the tony maloof story there's a lot of people including one of the editors for this podcast archie big homie archie a uk homie has just put out a taiwan video or it's coming out soon very excited Shout out Archie. Um, he he told me when I posted you on my story, he said, wait, you know Tony? And I was like, yeah, that's my boy. And like he sweats you really hard. Like he's been a fan. Understandably so, you were one of the best filmers of all time in BMX. And uh, also a pretty pretty damn good writer, I'll tell you that much. Um, just, just tell me your story, dude. Go ahead. Well, thanks, Bob. I'd like to start my story off here at the beginning of uh, March 31st, 1989. Is that your birthday? That is the day that I was not conceived, but it's from... So mom. nine months earlier, your parents had sex. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I don't know. I think I was actually... Um, what do they call it? Premature? I was premature a little bit. Makes sense. Yeah. It was. <laughs> Carry on. I don't yeah. mean your whole life story. Dude. Give me the BMX shit with maybe some highlights along the way. Yeah, BMX I was, was I was a premature baby. I was I was a C section since we're on birth. My brother was, dude, and do you think oh. that it's affected him at all? What I, I learned something about like when you pass through the vaginal canal as you're born, like there's certain chemicals and shit and like bonding things that make you like calmer and as a normal person and maybe you're the older, you're the older section fuck me up. Right? Yeah. She might have been a my sister might have been a C section too. Oh yeah. My mom just didn't want to deal with the <laughs> Dude, I, can't I, really, yeah. I can't really be like You were all natural? Oh yeah, I crawled out. Good I for was you, dog. Good for you. Out. You said, "Yo, mom, I'm ready. Get me the fuck out of here." He said, "Fuck school. I don't want to be here." <laughs> like I said, premature. So yeah. then I was an incubator or whatever the fuck. And uh, yeah, your boy was fucking ready to go, but young and retarded. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> They thought so, dude. Like that, that's honestly like back then. That's what they thought. They were like, "Oh, well, he came out early, so he's gonna be stupid." And <laughs> checks out. I'm not, I'm not sure if they're right or not. <laughs> the verdict is still out. On he's got tenacity. I'll give him that much. You know. Yeah. Oh wow. Quote. <laughs> yeah. Exactly what you're quoting. Nobody else knows, but you know. Who do you think that guy was, though, right? Like, just yeah. some, some, some random. Yeah, some random guy. Yeah. He's like, I work at the fucking church, but I know one smart word <laughs> tenacity. <laughs> now he's timelessly captured. Maybe somebody out there gets it. If you do, leave a comment. I got tenacity, bro. I'll give you that much. Oh, definitely. I'll send you five bucks on Venmo if you can tell me that reference. If you know that reference, then you deserve something. Or five bucks are, is what you deserve. You're one of the beautiful people that were supporting DVD purchases. Back in no hints. No hints. Get out of here. All right. 
carry on life story um no i I mean the reason so look i went to this place where i played indoor soccer and on the left they had like well there was this corridor and you would go there and on the left was indoor soccer and on the right there was a skate park and i was always just like i would fucking rather go there so i was always like looking through the plexiglass and looking at the skate park as you're playing soccer how old are you at this point uh probably like maybe eight but it wasn't until like 11 until i finally got to go to the skate park for like a birthday party or something nice yeah then i was in there with like a shitty bike and then like a year later i was like in there with like a better bike or like a skateboard they had camps damn the early days and then like yeah and Dude, it was a BMX park, which we didn't know. Like skateboarding was obviously more easy for people to entry level. Mm-hmm. But Scrap was a BMX park. So when we would when we would go there, I would notice right away. I'm like, the skateboarders suck. Like they don't land anything. They really don't. <laughs> a lot of skating is just not landing stuff. Yeah, they fucking suck. And yeah the bmxers was like it was like dude they had big bmx contests back then with like dave mirror and shit we're not like he was there every week but like when they had a big one they yeah like they, matt hoffman was going there right it was a thing and so there was a couple dudes uh, jesus christ sorry hold on Whew. carry on no you're fine casey burke and koji craft and jimmy walker and a lot of motherfuckers like Mike Escamilla. Of- I'm looking at old footage of this place and it's like Seth Kimbrough's there doing bar manis on the quarter. I can oh, see yeah, scrap. Yeah. Okay, I can see scrap. That makes oh, sense because yeah. it's like the place is kind of domed like this. Well, it was and- just a big skate park. They had a vert ramp and they had all this shit. And that's where I learned how to fucking Butcher's build- there, dude. That's where I learned to. I met Butcher. Dude. Sick. That's where I learned how to build ramps too and learn construction because I could ride for free because it was seven bucks a night. And if you wanted to go every night, like my parents were not down, you know? Yeah. Um, seven bucks, we can't afford it. Yeah, that place was a fucking shit. And I just didn't know that it was that spectacular at the time. And so as I got to fucking meet people or whatever, whatever, who the fuck were we talking about? Jeff K earlier? We were talking about your career. No, uh, why do we story? Start? Scrap, no. this is how you got introduced to biking. I had something to do with somebody that was at Scrap. Either way, my oh. mom saw uh, Nate Wessel at that, like, Matt Hoffman tour that came through Scrap. Yep. Seriously, she thought everybody with dreadlocks was Nate Wessel. <laughs> Is that Nate? Anytime she saw anybody with dreadlocks, she was like, isn't that that guy from that thing? And I was like, Mom, a lot of people have dreadlocks. Mom, you're being silly right now. Mom, would you stop it? Mom, you're being ridiculous. Yeah, no, Scrap, scrap is basically what started it because... I mean, it's weird to say because BMX is such a big part of my life, but Scrap Skate Park really is what did it. Like, it was almost fucking planted into my story. 100%. Look, Just looking at this video, this one Matt Hoffman's Pro Tour Scrap Skate Park is like all of the superstars, you know, Nate Wessel, Corey Nastasio. Oh, well, that's when they... That's when they they started a film for the... uh, the video game so they're oh making, wow they're making a map wow of yeah yeah and they were touring yeah i'm there dude i have fucking printed whatever like not polaroids but actual like film photos that i took from that day i was there that's awesome yeah that might have been you getting your shirt signed right there by butcher maybe if it's like a fucking three okay with the buzz cut it's like a th- I was wearing a three quarter sleeve, like uh maybe I remember what you were wearing. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I was there, dude. 
And you know what's fucking funny is that I met Butcher that day, and then later, me and him got high as fuck at the bakery. Shout out the bakery. Yeah. I was at the bakery the day that they were there. I was filming the animal team, and he was like, yo, where do we go to, to like, I need some blunts, and I was like, say less. And me, me and fucking Butcher just <laughs> walked and got, got blunts. And it's the South Side, dude. And it was like two white guys just like walking through the South Side to go get blunts. But it's me and Butcher, you know, and they're like a couple of these guys are like, yo, y'all don't know where we are at. We're like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, I was like, yeah, we do. It's fine. And it was, yeah, it was funny as hell. All right. They used to sound, they would film fucking music videos in that in the bakery the first one yeah the first one and uh it was titty boy who essentially is two chains that was his first name titty boy yeah that's two chains name literally two chains or a different person hey, look it up I'll, I'll give you time titty boy Two chains. Of I reason. accidentally typed it right. Oh, it is two chains. What the fuck? Formerly yeah. Titty Boy. Right. Dope. So there was a time at the original bakery where Titty Boy pulled up and he was fucking filming like a music video and he had like an iPhone 4 or something. And it was an auxiliary cord that went into one of those uh, like actual like, like a house phone. Like it looked like a house phone, but it plugged into his iPhone 4 or something. Mm hmm. They were filming this video and blah, 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 dude. It was all like Brian Kaczynski, Jeff Kluwitz, Walter Perringer, you know, like a bunch of people were all at like the bakery and then they're in like a different zone shooting a titty boy video. <laughs> <laughs> and this is before he was fucking two chains, right? That's wild. Like titty boy is just like, oh man, y'all dope as hell. You got BMX video, you know, whatever. And yeah. like, well, like, dude, Walter Perringer was like slapping like these girls' asses in the music video, <laughs> or just outside of the music video. Just good job. I good was, I don't think it was in the video. I think he was just like, "Can I, can I slap your ass?" You know, like, <laughs> hey, right? Yeah. So like, Walter's got to pass. He's just like slapping ass, and they're like, like "Yes, okay. queens." Yeah, yeah, and it was it was just fucking outrageous. All of it. And uh, it was way before he was two chains, so that's, that's wild, he, yeah. Titty boy, and that was like at the first bakery location. I still Wait. remember the bakery almost as if like it was last year, but obviously it's like twelve years ago at this point. Yeah, so crazy. All right, so you got introduced to the scrap when you were eleven. Carry on. Oh shit! With your uh, story, um, dog. I'm gonna keep reminding you that you're telling your whole BMX career right now. No, just I went to the skate park and that was the rest, dude. Like I met Kevin Porter, Koji Craft, Casey Burke, Jimmy Walker, so many more people that like came through there, like Road Fools came through there like a couple times. So I just got to meet everybody and I was when you're young. just a kid, you get your parents to take you to that skate park at night, like and ride yeah, at your house during the day. Like, yeah, it was like seven to nine bucks, depending like what year it was. Like it was expensive to kind of go there every night and to get rides. So this was kind of also the era where I would get like driven there by older kids. I didn't have my license yet. I was like thirteen. People would come pick me up. I'd come home like smelling like cigarettes. Yeah, they're like, smoking cigarettes. I'm like, no, they are. No, I'm just being around it. Yeah, yeah. Like I didn't know how to like how to explain it, but I was so passionate about riding, and you know, like it's a fucking really strong aspect of like growing up where kids. It's okay for a kid to like hang out with like some drunk driver fucking dad that's taking you to soccer practice, but right. 
I'm going to the skate park with some kid that like we can barely afford gas and we all got to take our front wheels off to like make it work. It's like a lot, you know? Yep. And uh, it was like already forming an identity for me. So that's what it was. And I just would come home and say, yeah, it's all good. You know, I would watch the Simpsons at night and just like fucking clean my rims with fucking simple green and fix my brakes, you know? Yeah. And it would be dialed, dialed. And I don't even ride brakes anymore. But back then it was all about foofanoos and the tricks were different. So that's all I wanted to do was to, it, I wanted my brakes to work when I foofed the sub rail. And when yep. you, if you were 16 and you could foof the sub rail, you were it's huge, fun. dude. Gangster at the top of the list. Yeah. That's who I was. So I didn't know it quite much back then, but. You know, that's what I always kind of explain to some kids who were like, oh, how'd you go pro when you were like 17? I'm like, I really didn't do shit. I just copied everybody. Emulated. But yeah. also copy. Good artists copy, great artists steal. Yeah. I mean, I, <clears throat> it's like Sergio Leos and Chris Doyle were doing downside whips. And that was like new, you know, like. But I could also downside whip a six foot quarter as high as them at 16. It's it's not that I was like doing it to get sponsored. It's just I just did what they did. I was I mean, I was emulating them. I was emulating. Them. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Um, when did street riding become a thing for you? I can't really pinpoint it, but I do know when I realized that I had my own objective. Like I, I knew when I was like, I don't want to do that shit anymore. I have my own, I see things like my own way, you know? So like what age, so you're 13 at scrap and then you're kind of just a park rider and you're emulating your heroes. And did you get sponsored? Like I probably skipped over asking about street, but like as a park rider, cause like I'm picturing you just literally going to the skate park and that's it. Like you're not even I'm riding street. 17. Say that again. I'm a pro at 17. Damn. Were you, so before pro you were flow, no? Or you just went straight pro? I was like flow, like two years into riding, like kind of. I can say me too. Yeah. Um, who were you flow for? First would have been, I mean, there was like Everd, Standard. Would you say Everd? Everd, it's Drive Backwards. Never heard of it. Yeah, it's like a clothing brand. It was like the okay. first one I ever had. Dude, me too. Mine was called Unbearable. <laughs> yeah, dude, the clothing brand. Clothing <laughs> brands. They're like, I got t-shirts. I'm going to sponsor some young talent. Yeah local shit yeah yeah that that's how it was for me ever kind of like lend lended a, a hand into like getting hooked up by standard i i can't even remember all of it but by the time i was 17 i was on ugp and sputnik and i was pro and that's huge then, and then i just kind of went for it traveled and was here and there and changed sponsors. What was it like getting put on UGP? Did you talk to Ronnie directly? Ronnie had already sold it. What? Damn. Yeah. And you know what's crazy? Who'd you talk to then? Well, here's the funny thing. Ronnie sold UGP. And then Sputnik is Ronnie. So you're on UGP and Sputnik. Sputnik. <laughs> So I was like, on Sputnik, I'm riding for Ronnie, but then I'm riding for UGP. And he's so you're like, talking to Ronnie, you're like, I'm riding for your ex-girlfriend and you at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Well said. Yeah, that's essentially like how it was. And I didn't know that much about how the industry worked back then. So I just was like fucking doing T-bogs and tail whips, dude. Like, I didn't know shit. That's all I knew what to do. What's wrong with T-Box and tail whips? No, nothing. But you understand like where we're at now when we're adults and there's more to it. Back then, it was for real just like I was fucking just like, what do I ride? And uh, 
you know. You didn't develop your like taste for making video. When I, was did, like, uh... I was like 17 too. I'd go somewhere and I'd just be like, is anybody on the team old enough to buy me Swishers? <laughs> That's young thug Maloof, titty boy. <laughs> 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 young titty boy uh when did a camera first get into your hands at what age oh and, way and why like 14 so like way earlier than okay and that's part of obviously part of the reason why you got sponsors because you're making videos yeah i think so i mean do you remember what the first video is that you made yeah it was called midwest mayhem and it is not online. Well, it's in my little journal here now, so. Yeah, you will not find it. Um, I think it's in a cabinet probably at my mom's house. VHS? No, well, kind of. You remember those little small tapes that used to go in the VHS that you had to like? Yes. Yeah. Like a dongle, but for a VHS. Yeah, it was like a VHS dongle. That's yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was like that. We used to make videos on that all the time. And I would still make labels for them too, dog. Like fucking draw them and, and color them with colored pencils and shit. We were very we were very ahead of the game, I think. Most of these kids <laughs> mm -hmm. wanted to see something get done. Where do you think that comes from? You're like, let's fucking do it. And you kind of created your own thing. Even that... The young age of 14. I don't know, man. I think it's probably like in your genetics. No, I think it's absorbance. Like, yeah, your, your, your genetics are definitely inheritance or whatever, uh, heritage, however you want to call it. It's like, but you definitely absorb it. You know, like you see something and you go, I know why they did that. You know, like you could watch something and there's so much importance in what you just watched that you absorb it. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? For me, voices, tomorrow we work. I absorbed those. And then, yeah. What was yours? What's your biggest influence when you were like 13, 14? Uh, the system video was huge for me. Nice. Like these crazy oversaturated colors. Like, I don't know if they're, I think they were on accident, to be honest. I have no idea. You're going to look it up. <laughs> um. The system video was like DK and Fly, you know, it was like the distribution company, but they hired Will Stroud to make that video. And it was all like, yeah, it VX. makes sense. 2004. It was like not VX, but it was a uh, TRV 900. And it's that camera particularly is like very oversaturated, like, like strong blacks and really high Crushed blacks. Like yeah. Really high oranges and greens and stuff. Yep. At like I I don't know if it was intentional or not, but it it's, doesn't seem like it. Just looking at the footage, I'm like, yeah, this is probably just straight ahead of camera. I think but who knows? Like, maybe I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But like that <clears throat> that camera and that time hit a lot for me. Yep. Yeah. And Kevin Port is such a legend, dude. There's a lot of good music in there, you know, yeah. like Oasis and fucking Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix, right? Like, um pretty important time for just like i wonder how many people can relate to Will, how Will Stroud and his, like his brother too which a lot of people don't know like was like involved there like he helped film and had like some clips in there i just think that that's important that's something that i would like wish for like me and my brother which we, we both make film but in different genres you know right um so what was your first camera? My first camera was like, a, I, I just used my mom's like Me soccer, soccer yeah. mom. Mini DV, just fucking Sony something. Oh, look at you. It's late for you. It's 909. Um, no, I think my first God, Young Tony's in the system video in 2004. Young Tony Nyer. Shout oh, out Tony yeah. Nair. I want to talk to Will Stroud. I wrote down his name because I haven't talked to him here yet, but legend. Yeah, he'd be a good one to have. He's really fucking, 
he's a good convo too. He's so good to talk to. Dude, some people, it's just like, you have too, you have too much, like Stu Johnson. I was just like, Jesus Christ, like, where do I even start with you? Like, you want to go back to 1996 and talk about everything you've done since then? Dude, Johnson, <laughs> yeah, I'll just book him like every three months. Yeah. You are the second repeat guest I've had, which is, it's feeling cool. Having, um, who was back for the, Trey Jones was the first repeat. I was like, damn, it's cool. We got repeats, baby. Or when we did it. Didn't we do it like it was like a not even a full episode though, right? We did it in 2019 and it was I was in my parents' house. I had my gamer headset on and we just talked. I forget what was going on and I should probably listen to it. The cool thing is like when I'm older, I can go back to these episodes and like relive whatever I'm I'm going through right now, but it's kind of wild to think about. So we're getting your first camera. You're using your mom's what's you filmed Midwest Mayhem. What was the first video you made that like got some like traction and like what were you motivated by were you like i want to see myself doing tricks because like as weird as it is to say like that's why i started filming i wanted to see what my tricks look like. i still love that of just like film myself doing something i get to watch it there's no shame in that it's fucking it is what it is and that's that was the way to do it back then straight up mini dv tapes yeah, like I said, we weren't. That wasn't even mini DV tapes. That was a. Uh, you'd have to look Bigger? it up. No, it's something like VHS. DV like, tapes. Oh, uh, they like click into a VHS tape, and then you can put it into a VHS player. That could be DV. Digital video might have been the first one, and then they came out with mini DV. I don't really know the history of it that well, but it should. VHS tape. VHS dongle. Well, it is. Uh, they call it a Koenig. That is sounds racist. Why? <laughs> what are you talking about? Koenig? <clears throat> Koenig? Yeah. Oh, because it, right it has now. nig in it? I see it. See it? Yeah. <sighs> That's fucking weird. Yeah, so like the camcorder that we Not had. Not compatible with mini DV. Okay. Yeah, so like you would shoot on this tape and then you would put it in an, into that tape and then you would put it into a VHS and then you could fucking watch it. That sounds and, exhausting. Right, and then when I used to have to edit, I would have to like plug in two VHS systems and like do start and pause and edit. Props that's to how, you, dude. Yeah, that's, that's... how I started. That's how I started editing. <laughs> I thought I was cool because I did mini DV to start, but that's pretty oh. cool. Sorry, Bob, you're not cool. Damn it! <laughs> 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 what was Bob, the first video you made? Did you use that camera to make like the the thing that ended up getting you sponsored? Well, that's and how. What I... were your first videos like? Were they all just skate park footage, or were they? When did you, when did the ramps come in? Like, keep talking. Tell me the story um my first edits were i guess i had a friend named computer joe right and uh yeah move your mic dude did you say right as if i would know who computer joe is fuck you uh, move your mic i had a friend named computer joe right carry on blunt man thanks i um, want a blunt so computer joe was <laughs> Hit us these softwares before like i had um final cut when it was dope final like, cut seven no like way before early. get the fuck yeah. out of here all right you're not that old but you did start before me okay so i had like a pc i might have had premiere on a pc too but I was like editing on a PC and that's what we made. We made, I could send you a video that I made on that computer. I remember the exact one. And it's like, dude, to the point where we used to go so far with like, you know, the rubber bands on the sound, we would take out all the sound and only use like, if, if, if you grind, we'd use the sound otherwise gone. And we were like, we used to make these waves to be like, no sound unless you grind. <laughs> That's you know awful. what I mean? Awful, but 
I could see you thinking it's cool back then. Back then, we thought it was so cool. Like, now, if, I'm detail I, oriented. You know, I listen to it, I watch the video, and I'm like, oh, it sounds so bad. Honestly, like that applies to some shit now where people are like running with their upside down tripod and then you don't hear any audio. And then next thing you know, you hear the grind and it's like, I know what you did right there. Not everybody will, but yeah, it's like, Oh, so you're just the same thing. You're just fucking booking ass and with your fucking Adidas shoes on. First of all, Adidas are great. I don't know what your problem is. Yeah. Because you're not on camera. You can wear whatever you want. Yep, those. Dude. You want to go running, bro? Dude, those are exactly what somebody would fucking wear. While fucking doing uh, the fairy feet? <clears throat> dude. Twinkle toes? I call it twinkle toes. You do I, twinkle toes so well. I've I never seen call, anybody who twinkle toes call, as good as you. Me and Wes got call them baby steps. Twinkle toes is what it is, though. Fuck you and your baby steps. Twinkle toes? You twinkle toe? Oh, You're so good oh, at it. You start here, and then you fucking can't hear you silently. And then you, up. you and your fucking Adidas, you and Colin Vavernack can go fucking suck a duck. And we will when we're fucking millionaires off of wholesaling real estate. I'm Shut sure. Colin, Colin, Van, yeah. yes. Colin um, talked to me about wholesale not too long ago. I got to have him on here too. There's, see, there's so many, you know what I'm saying? Colin. Colin V, dude. Okay, so is it too, is it like, uh, sensitive enough to talk about this in the podcast so you this is just you now right this is no more dig yeah no i mean it's probably been over a month since i talked with dig they um they said let's keep doing it and man it's just like this we're recording this sunday night i have to I'm putting this episode out tomorrow like they want you know one episode a month which is dope and i agree let's do it but it's got to be like a special episode like something that'll attract a bunch of views or like maybe a big name or maybe it's like sit and review videos that came out for the month like um almost very similar to unclicked um but honestly i just like i can't think about this too much otherwise i'm not going to do it i just need to talk to a homie and enjoy it who are you calling right now what are you doing i'm not calling anybody somebody's calling me hello Somebody had love, dude. Relax. I'm still, I'm still on the podcast. Can I call you back? <laughs> it's okay, I love you back. How it's done, Bob? Shout a. So yeah, dig, dig is still involved. <laughs> <Don't you worry. laughs> Dig's still involved. In fact, I almost put the sticker on before the show. I love Dig. Dig's the shit. And uh, it's weird to say "Welcome to Canode Knows," brought to you by me, not Dig. But <laughs> it does, dude. If I was them, I wouldn't give me anything for this podcast. But it, we did a good year together, and it was great. But um, yeah, it's stupid to dump money into a BMX podcast. This shit ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I agree. I was just asking, and I heard you talk about it publicly, so I was like, "Oh, I could bring it up." It's good for these things to be announced, you know? Who yeah. cares? I think I mentioned it before a little bit, but yeah. I, ideally, what would happen is we do one episode a month that's like partnered with Dig, and it's something extraordinary, not just a conversation, but I don't know how to do that. Like, I'm not going to... I have all these ideas. I want to do good YouTube videos. I want to do like mini documentaries about like you would be an interesting subject for a documentary and take old footage and like write a script and narrate it and fucking edit it well, but it's just like... I ain't got the time, you know, it's ain't gonna happen. Dude, Trent, Trent fucking was talking about the captions when we was doing the Jeff K thing, you know? Yeah. And he's like, why don't you go get some old footage? And like put it in there and it would make the video like pop more. I'm like, Oh, of you and the 16 year old thing. No, like I think you guys were talking about like the thug shit. Yeah. yeah. And he was like doing the captions for me because my computer didn't like, uh, I Grant Castelluzzo or Grant Smith? No, 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 no. You and Jeff K. Yeah, you were talking about Grant. You just said Grant. I said the wrong word. Oh, okay. <laughs> said the wrong name. Okay, yeah, yeah, Say names. I said word. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Grant. <laughs> You're a person, dude. I'm sorry. 
and he was no, saying you should get old footage and cut it in yeah it just takes a lot of effort like it's like i was just like that's so much work i don't care who gives it like yeah and your yeah. caption sucked by the way like i wouldn't hire you like you you get less than four dollars for that clip you know what are you talking you got, about you got some work your captions were bad there's a terrible font you just automatically did and you exported it you didn't like go in and make sure like a complete sentence happens or anything that's why i posted it on my story and not as a post you know he and you put no effort in we went in there and we fucking i dissected it a little bit dude but like clips i've seen way, I've seen way worse like i've seen like, oh 100 i'm global, talking shit because i love you global viral fucking clips of stuff where it's just like the, the wrong, wrong word I'm like, oh, fucking you. Nobody gives a fucking fuck. I really don't. And that's what I've learned. Like, because that's literally my job. I do social media. And it's just like it at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good your captions are, or how fancy your animations are. It's about what you're saying. First and foremost. But then, yeah, I remember at the beginning of this podcast, I was making clips of each episode and it would legit it, it would take my entire day. I would make three or four clips, but it would take me five or six hours to make those clips because I'm going through and finding the old shit, downloading it, putting it in, timing out all the captions, typing out every single word they say. It's it's tedious. So everybody who enjoys the Instagram clips, go show go show some love to Kiko and Archie, and Trent, like, like and, shit, and, and Wes, Freak, Free Coaster Creative. I have to like list the yeah. list list my homies who edit. Like, share all the BMX. Uh, whatever. If you've made it this far in the episode, please sub fucking subscribe. <clears throat> What's this thing? What's this name? Huh? Remember that thing? What thing? What are you talking about? UCL. Thing? UCL. USL. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a pretty cool idea. You know what Sauce told me? I uh, I saw Sauce at a not too long a couple weeks ago. We were in California, and him and Francis are doing like Shopify stores on Facebook, like big money. Like Francis is using his marketing skills and videography to make ads, and they buy a product for cheap, use ads to sell it at a big markup, and scale it and. I'm listening to the numbers and I'm just like, what am I doing with my life, bro? Like the money's out there. Let's go. Gotta have fucking Francis too, man. Shout out Francis. I had him in dude. Get him on. I also got to talk to sauce again. I tried to when I was in California like two weeks ago, but we was busy. We was going through it. Jamil. Do you have any aspirations to uh, pivot the direction of the podcast? Is Fuck yeah, that's why it's named Canode Knows. So I can, it's not just the BMX audience, it's business, it's whoever I think is interesting. There's a dude that I just met at this party the other night that is like looking into getting into the industry of like uh, the microdosing mushrooms business. And I had everything to talk to him about. He was just like, so I've been selling these microdose mushrooms. I was like, word, me too. <laughs> and he's like, word? And I was like, yeah, just to homies, but I like get it from source i grind it up put it in capsules and sell it to the homies it's a magical thing especially at a low dose like mushrooms highly recommended i've done all the drugs and mushrooms are a good one there's a lot of bad drugs that you shouldn't do i would suggest everybody does microdose mushrooms and try it out for a bit it like amplifies your awareness and your presence and makes you more of a human versus like suppressing shit like alcohol or weed is you know pretty much okay it almost amplifies your human existence as well but microdosing shrooms is a magical thing and it's going to be the next booming industry once it all gets legalized i think there's a bunch of big players that are like making moves to create companies because it's already legal in like seattle or washington and vegas and there's like like i heard in vegas you can buy microdose capsules at the gas station i'm like that's the business to be in right now like I remember 10, 15 years ago, like hearing all the, cause a uh, horse worked at a smoke shop and he was like plugged in and he got to see slash hear the behind the scenes of like all these people who were making big moves in the cannabis industry to like get positioned. And there's so much money being thrown around, to, like get the locations and the warehouses and the licenses and then be able to like distribute. And there's like, as soon as it became legal, it was like game on. 
that's where I think mushrooms are right now. Like as soon as psilocybin is legalized, then the money behind, cause you're going to be able to buy microdose capsules at the gas station. It's going to be, it's going to be a whole new industry. It's going to be wild. And that's interesting. I was listening to this dude at the party talking. I was like, what am I doing? You know, like I could do something like that. That'd be pretty cool. And that's something I believe in too. We're talking about your BMX career. <clears throat> you know, I mean, microdosing is fucking dope. Anything in moderation is dope. You know, even weed and particularly mushrooms, because like you don't want to trip trip. That needs a special time and a place. That's a scary. That's a scary avenue. Once you, you know, it can you be go, scary for sure. Go overboard, and it's the same with that. You know, and, uh, yeah. You have to you have to be you have to be in the right place for it. Microdosing though is like part of everyday life. It's like a replacement for Adderall or anti anxiety. Like it's a magical thing. No, you can definitely microdose and maneuver life. Like that's a Big real time. Yeah. I am completely aware of that. I condone it. I think that But you don't do it. Have you ever done it? Well I have, yeah. That's why I I, I think that doing small doses is very fun. You know, like particularly, I'll tell you a story of just uh, taking a small amount of mushrooms and going down the river with a girlfriend. And she looked at me and she was like, I am not tripping balls, but I feel so good. And yes. we, and then we like floated down the river and we had so much fun. Like we would stop and like talk to other people and everything was just perfect. You know, that's everything felt so blissfully like calm and in this in this element of like a little bit of wilderness and also childhood uh fun. fun. But all Just but play. also like but like we knew who we were still. Right. Still going like too far. Yeah. And that's what like low dosing is and Acid Ooh, I kind of like the ring of that low dose. Acid is like fucking a little bit scarier because you got to be scary. Like you don't know how to do acid because it's not like mushrooms. You, I know people that have like taken like one tab and then somebody takes a tab and one's like a quarter. Freaking the fuck out. The other one's like, because ah, it gets like distributed differently because they drip shit and it could be like one tab is massive dose. The other tab is like a small dose. Yeah, yeah. I've also like been the, I've been the distributor of that like so I've done the drop. So you've sold acid boys is what you're saying, huh? Yeah, Bobby Canode. Confessions, dude. <laughs> 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 no, but let's stay on it because I. No, think... but like when I was when I was doing it, I was like very particular because I was like I know that this can go wrong, so I was like I'm gonna drip this shit fucking bomb bomb in the middles, you know. There's my detail oriented Tony. Yeah, my guy, uh, my favorite guy. No, just the yeah, exactly. Like the same thing that you would talk about, like editing. You know, like yeah, you don't want to exactly. put something out unless it's perfect. Like I, well, Rogan has a good batch or bit I'm about not, that. I'm not like learn from my mistakes and be like, oh, I'm just gonna sloppily distribute this acid. I've seen this shit go wrong, so I'm gonna do it right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or at least the best I can. Yeah. You're on acid doing it. Like, oh no, I wasn't. Uh, on I would not be doing shit. So, but that's what I'm that's saying is like, like, well, you know, you know, like those times in your life too, you're also like, may, might be like having sex with like a crazy partner or whatever. So it might not be acid that's skewing your vision. <laughs> so I was still distracted in one way or another. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a special thing. I think like it shouldn't be taken lightly for people listening who eventually want a psilocybin trip or haven't already. Like it's a part of life and you should do it. Like it's crazy that it exists like in mushrooms form, especially like the fact that it just grows from the earth and humans eat it. And then they see fractals and God, like that you see consciousness and that's basically how I would describe it. Like you can stare at a blank wall and then you see like, the beautiful patterns of geometry and think about or look into sacred geometry if you haven't like it all it it all just you know it breathes with you it's a magical thing but it that's like a ceremonious almost thing but there's a difference between taking it as a microdose and taking it as a journey to see your creator 
And that's uh, that's what I think, like, stories in the Bible, like the burning bush, I think that could have been a psychedelic bush. And a lot of uh, <laughs> people explaining, like, why we're here or the existence or the reason why human beings are here ties back to psychedelic experiences. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a magical thing, not to be taken lightly. But microdosing is a magical thing that helps your life. I'm going to pause. I got to pee again. Taking lightly is an odd way to say it, but it's it, it you is. You shouldn't just like be partying and fucking take it. You can, and you're gonna have a great time and feel silly as a goose. But you should treat it with respect. Like you should reach, you should treat it like it's plant medicine, as well, hippy hippy like, as that sounds. I'll like the Bobby Canode and let everybody else hear it because who cares? And uh, we went to these hot springs on the PCH trip, BC, BSD PCH. And everybody took mushrooms. But, As you should. That's a beautiful experience. Right. And you have to cross like a cold spring to go across. And... Do you have to go into cold water while you're shrooming? Well, yeah, we took shrooms like driving in. And then you have to hike. So then by the time you're there, like the, the shrooms are on. And it's like a nude hot spring. So you get naked, and then you have to cross this cold spring. And depending on the Everybody time... Everybody goes... Bzzz. Yeah, yeah. And the dicks are out, you know? Nothing yeah. Better, nothing better for a BMX. You let the dicks out. Like for a team to bond, you know? Nothing better. Pause. Resume. <laughs> Resume. <laughs> are you you seen that about... Jack Harlow clip? <laughs> <laughs> The dicks are just like resume. Resume. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're just like you have to walk across this cold spring and it's either like up to your knees or it's up to your dick, depending on the season. So I forget where it was, but it was hilarious because everybody's naked and it's all out. And everybody's on mushrooms. Beautiful. You can't care about other people's dick size when you're tripping on shrooms. You just... But some of the dudes were like eating them slowly and some of them were fucking, you know, cranking. And I'm just going to say Jeff Cadger like ate all Too many. His... <laughs> of course he, ate... he did. He ate all his mushrooms like right away. You know, That's a good man. And so he's like bugging out and uh, we get over there and it's like we're in the hot springs and everything's fucking dope and then we start to see these three girls that look like goddesses you know they're like 19 and they were all getting naked and they're they're starting to cross the water and we're like and you're oh my just like these are my queens we're like what the hell is this this is magic you know and cadger you look at cadger and he's like he thought he was like in hades you know <laughs> Just scared, dude. He was like, "This is insane." And after a minute, uh, David Grant looks. At, he's like, "Yo, everybody, better get ready, dog. Like, yeah, like <laughs> we're gonna fuck these girls." <laughs> and these girls come over, and they're all from Berkeley. You know, like they they were like all in college, and this is like 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 a bucket list thing for them yeah it found out about this hot spring and they were like we're going and we're gonna get naked and it's gonna be cool and they didn't know that there was gonna be this bmx team there. yeah group of shaggy dudes on mushrooms everybody, <laughs> everybody's flying dude hey ladies hold on yeah. everybody was trying to fuck them around fucking rock corners and crazy shit wow like, did you guys end up kicking it with them yeah Fuck yeah, as you should. BSD boys. You oh, dude, up. dude, you'd fucking climb a rock. Like you'd be like, oh, I'm gonna. Uh, this this one's a little bit too hot for me. I'm gonna go up to that one, and like you climb. naked climbing. Yeah, and like your asshole is just out. Such a visual, bro. I'm just <laughs> naked little Tony Maloof fucking climbing up, dude. Yeah. Tall ass DPG, fucking naked. Yeah, we gotta get. Like, oh, we should, I get read, ready, uh, should I read? Should I read? Can I read his shitty tattoos or his fucking butthole? <laughs> oh, man. All right. 
When we come back, more of Maloof's BMX story. <laughs> we got off track like a motherfucker. Hold on. And we're back. Welcome back to Tony Maloof's BMX life story. <laughs> <laughs> So if I can remember correctly, we're talking about the video camera that you had, and I was asking, what's the video that made you get noticed? How did you get initially sponsored by UGP and Sputnik? I appreciate you taking me seriously as an interviewer, even though you've known me since I was 20, and we've we've been living. Yeah, I take you so serious. I appreciate your serious answers, and we're not getting off track at all with our tangential uh -huh. conversation. No, I don't think it was a video. Like, I don't think that's what. what oh, it was what just it, straight up word of mouth. You're like this fucking Tony Maloof kid. No, it was just like when I was younger. You you went to contest. There was no video before then. We were kind of early to the video phase, only because of MidwestBMX.net. But you had to like online download that shit and post it. It was before YouTube. It's before video. Google is before YouTube. All the shit. Wait. Yeah. Google Video was like same time as YouTube. Do you remember? Do you remember video video.google.com? No, YouTube was first. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, you would you would like literally I have videos on Google Video that you can't even find anymore because they're gone. Yeah. Like some of the the most like mind-shifting ones for me were on Video Google that I would I remember watching them in high school. I don't remember what I learned in high school, but I remember watching Animal Can I Eat on Video Google as a 15 year old in high school. Like, it's nuts. So, you went to contests and you got heard of and known? Animal Can I Eat on DVD. Tomato, tomato, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> what contest do you think made you get recognized? Well, I won. I think I, I think I won Baco twenty seventeen in Florida. What do you and mean twenty seventeen? Two thousand seven? You mean? Yeah. Twenty seventeen. Yeah. This fucking guy. Wow. Carry yeah. on. I keep thinking you're wearing like this huge like Indian garment. Are you on shrooms? You all right? Not, not as much as you are. You. <laughs> Baco wearing, 07. Like you're wearing a fucking Dan Marino jersey with no letters on it. <laughs> oh, my, uh, these are my um, fatigues. <clears throat> I'm part of the military. Blue Lives Matter. <clears throat> and uh, America. Actually, kind of some off color fucking fire. It's all good. Listen, you look good, kid. What do you want to know? Something about something? Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're devolving. This is good podcasting. Um, yeah. <laughs> Fucking finish your BMX story quick. <laughs> no chance, dude. Tony. Okay, no chance. We're just devolving into drunken conversation. Who cares? Here we go. It's about time the listeners get to know drunk Bob. I think I. I don't know. I think I was. I was pretty on it as far as not drinking when we first did it. And then, dude, what I keep thinking about every time I drink, I'm like, I start to feel guilty because foo. Yeah, foo. Epic BMX, the owner of Epic. Right. Is it foo? That's right. That's his name. That is right. Just need to confirm. He's the dopest guy. But I had a beer with, or I had a beer at his shop who Ethan gave me a beer from the fridge. And foo was like, wait. You said on your podcast you don't drink. And I was like, you're right. I did say that. But also I'm on vacation and I want to fucking have a drink. And then now I'm I'm having drinks with you on the podcast and I can't stop thinking about Foo. He's going to listen to this. This might be on Epic's TV in the shop and we're just talking inappropriately. So I have this like split <clears throat> mind because I'm conscious of like who's consuming it. But also there should be some reality of like who gives a shit. So we're drinking. It's me and Tom. Yeah, foo. How about this? Foo. Go cook some fucking shit for, that you caught from the sea, you fucking Filipino fucking, <laughs> fucking Oriental fucking somewhere. Oriental. Fucking, I know you're something from somewhere fucking. He would, 
I think he would. I think he would laugh at Oriental. <laughs> he told me the craziest story. Somebody I, almost I, I, drowned. I, I miss him. I love his whole family. Dude, he's the best. Like I, I never met him before, and then I went to his shop and we sat and talked for two hours. Like he's got the craziest stories. I think it was Hucker that went out with him and literally almost drowned because they were doing some diving shit and a boat came and just this, the craziest story. I was just like, holy shit. And then he, like, we're sitting out in front of his shop. Ethan had to go. So he left and it was just me and Fu and his family talking. Then he's telling me the story about like his kind of upbringing and the gangster shit that was going on on that literal street and all kinds of crazy stories. Like that's a dude who's holding it down for BMX. Like go support Epic. I don't know what else to say. Shout out Epic. Yeah. I mean, that dude is definitely fucking holding it down. He sells bike parts and, and supports the community at a length that can't be measured, even though pretty short. <laughs> even though he's pretty short and pretty Asian, he's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. the, length, <laughs> the length that he takes it, dude, to that that shop is like legendary and fuck yeah it's legendary it's so sick i had never been in there and then i got to go like i went for a sabrosa shop stop and we did like a rail jam there or whatever and then i never i don't remember it much like i remember filming it but i don't it's all blur and then when i went there recently i went and i uh i was in california i filmed matt ray at the real bmx street thing at the school where they shut down the school and x games did their thing you remember that the, oh, big, uh, the famous like rail to four block okay, type of thing. Uh, What's the school's called? Recon. Recon. Yeah, dude, that was fucking. Cra- that felt like a fever dream. Like Recon was nuts. Like watching Colin do that fakey hop in person, I was like, Jesus Christ. And then watching Brad, he wanted to do <clears throat> manual tap three hundred and sixty instead of the Manny tap one hundred and eighty that he had priorly done, and just like the frustration of watching him like almost pull the trigger and that just wasn't working, which I fully understand. It's just like, it's not going to work, but it's like on that big of a stage to watch it not work. It's just like, ah, fuck. And then watching Jordan Godwin do his like standard, standard fucking crook hard, ice hard. What did he do? Yeah. Crook hard, ice hard done that steep ass rail watching Lewis Mills, like fever dream. Just like, these are all my BMX heroes. And then rooftop coming up to me and being like, Hey Bobby, Nice to meet you. And I'm like, what the fuck? Nice to meet you, Rooftop. This is insane. It's so sick. And meeting all their girlfriends, like they were all so nice. And I brought Trip, I think. Yeah. And I had uh, Brett Silva's girlfriend watch Trip while I was just um, mingling. It was fire. <laughs> well, I got to fly everybody. What? <laughs> I was like, easy, Bob. What do you mean, easy, Bob? Flirting? Oh, with the girlfriends? No, fuck you. <coughs> oh, my Wait, bad. That's old, Bob. Have you ever gotten into relationship drama with other BMXers? You ever flirted with somebody that you shouldn't have? Um, one time, no. What do you mean, one time, no? The f- what? One time, no. no. I'm perfect. No. I would never offend any of my friends. I don't offend this anybody. is going to get dangerous. I don't offend anybody in BMX ever. <laughs> Stand by that. No, Here's I haven't. A... Um, Here's a good I'm... question, Tony. You know what's funny, though, is that actually, like, it, it ends up being later, where you're like, oh, a bunch of dudes end up like, oh, you too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a big deal. That girl was for the streets. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who fun. hates you in BMX? Who hates me? Yeah. Dude, I wish I knew. Comment below. I've, I've never hated you. You've never even pissed me off. We've been good friends for a long time. Have we wanna... not just been like close enough friends to where like you could piss me off? Like, yeah, we haven't had like much at stake. You know what I mean? Like, if you're working on something together with somebody, then maybe you have beef and you can hate each other. But, but there was I've a time. never hated you, dude. Have you time. hated me? No, 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 never. Um, there was a time where there was like a bank 
to like flat and then a quarter, you know, it was like this. And uh, where it had a sub at Scrap Skate Park in Hoffman Estates, Illinois. And I I went up and I did a foofanoo on it. And this dude was like right behind me. And no matter, it wouldn't have mattered if I landed it or not, but I was not going to land it. And I got mad and I threw my bike. And this dude was coming up like right behind me and it just fucking smoked him. And he, <laughs> and he separated his shoulder. Damn. Yeah. You fucked him up. Well, dude, even if I would have landed it, it would have been the same outcome. You know what I mean? You would have hit him with your body. Right. right. Yeah. I would have been on my bike. It would have been the same thing. Well, you don't know that for sure. I'll tell you that much. You don't know. I'm pretty sure. It's all cause... hypotheticals, dog. What happened, happened. And what didn't happen, didn't happen. So My peripherals are pretty fucking peripherals. great. Peripherals. He's stupid. He's premature. No, I knew where he was. I didn't know. Dude, I'm fucking with you. I know, but like I was in a foofanoo, and I got mad that it wasn't going to work out, so I threw my bike, and then it hit this dude. But, like, dude, if I would have landed the Fufanu, we would have fucking gone stem to stem anyway. You yeah. know? However, that dude got hurt, and uh, his crew, like, hated me for years. And it the was whole crew? His crew, dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everybody, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Who else? Who else hates you? <laughs> These are strong questions. I love it. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe my Aunt Debbie. <laughs> like, dude, how long? <laughs> What's wrong with your Aunt Debbie? She's gone, dude. You'd have to fucking get a shovel to find that. Mm. She dead. She dead, bro. Um, I, yeah, I don't know what you want to know, Bob. Who I hates mean, BMX drama? Uh... Who hates me? I think. I oh, think I, I think Zach Gerber hates me. Yeah, I have the same feeling. He said something that I didn't see directly, but I heard from somebody else that they he posted. It was about this podcast. He's like, I'm a fucking BMX podcast. He's the, Zach Gerber is a fucking nutcase. I love him. I like, a, I'm not even bothered by his. Yeah, fuck him. Yeah, he's not fuck him. I respect his perspective because i like the second amendment enthusiasm that he has and i like his perspective not me and he's fucking incredible on the bike but he said something about bmx podcast in general that i think somebody sent to me that that they were like he's kind of right you should fucking talk about what did he say something stupid just you know you should be talking about the natural cultural war that's going on and just you know like he wants me to be more like a la rogan podcast or some shit along those lines i it's not right because i don't even know what he said so it, it's all secondhand but my my guy zach gerber who i should write down let's let's get gerber on the podcast oh, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah there's a i mean whatever um yeah he, he talked some shit indirectly and then i heard it secondhand and i was like all right zach gerber i don't care whatever well, who he, hates me I, who else he wants a painting and <laughs> I hate that he fucking do you actually, say you hate that he wants attention no like he wants attention he didn't like one time that we went to chicago like for some jam for fit and him and all the michigan dudes like left and it was hilarious because i was like they were like oh we're they were mad that you were here and i was like okay and then they left like the second we got there and i get it it's like granted vegan and Austin Augie, you know, like polarizing have, figures. Yep. Yeah, it was like fucking some Tony goofy, Maloof. goofy boys, like, yeah, everybody showing up and signing autographs. But they just left, dude, and they split. Like, I'm not gonna call them pussies, but it was pretty pussy. Pretty <laughs> pussy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what other result do you want? Them to stay there and give you dirty looks all the whole time or yeah, I guess like fucking stay and say your shit and be man to man. I don't know. Yeah, I would stay and maybe just get to know us, man, and fucking not be gay. That's the thing. If everybody gets to know each other, everybody's going to be cool with each other. Like, 
I have yeah. no no hard feelings towards anybody. <laughs> literally oh, anybody. Yeah. We definitely didn't go there to fucking like turn around and go home. So No, yeah, yeah. Imagine hearing like, oh, this local person doesn't want us here. I guess we gotta go. <laughs> yeah, no. We just showed up and did what we had it's to do. Bigger than that, dog. Yeah, yeah. No, they could have stayed. It could have been all cool. You know what I mean? Is all I'm saying. It's I, funny I don't... how like somebody's absence can be as loud as somebody's presence. You know, I got a party if somebody's not there, but they should be there. Like everybody's kind of thinking about it. Like, oh yeah, Tony should have been here, but he ain't. You still got me thinking about who hates me. Josh De La Rosa. Who hates you? He doesn't hate me. Josh De La Rosa is on Bone Death. Who hates? You? Why does he hate you? The king he doesn't. Death. He doesn't hate me. But I remember a period where he was kind of like fucking a. I remember like talking to him about getting a clip for Mediocre Two, all this stuff. But I never ended up doing it. And I think there was a little bit of like hostility. Obviously, it's not a. It's nothing. I, I can't even remember. That's the first. Thing. There's no concrete hate that I can think of. But that's the most recent one where I was like, I hate when people don't like me. I want everybody to like me. But a lot of people aren't gonna like me. That's all right. <clears throat> no, and it's, um, it's a, you don't have you don't have to have everybody like you, but also you can't. It's even impossible. If they, even if they say that shit in the moment, they don't know. Yeah, they don't know you at all. I don't know you. They hate the idea of you, you know, they, but they don't know you. And that's a beautiful thing. I think once everybody gets to know somebody, they're like, oh yeah, yeah. you can see the goodness in anybody. Like Adam Twenty Two, so many people hate Adam. But like I've seen the side where it's like you're a person and I like you and you've worked for the guy. So you probably have like all the reasons to not like him. But I, I think I'm there's gonna, good inside of I'm that little yell from the other room or I don't even need to see his face. And he's just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, that's stupid, you know, and he's talking about some shit on the Internet and he means in nothing. Yeah, he's just like, that's retarded. Just shut up. I'm tired of hearing. He doesn't even want to hear about it, you know, and it's retarded. And he's yeah. right. Yeah. And it's pointless and it's over with. Bye bye. It's like right away. That's the thing that I think that I'm lacking as far as, you know, being a mm, quote unquote podcaster. Like, I don't necessarily have a strong opinion on shit. I, I'm fairly open. I'm like, let's hear both sides and then decide, you know, blah, blah, blah. But like people who are like successful are just like, nope, fuck that. And then move on. And that's a, that's a, that's a skill. Debates are, debates are fun and healthy debates are even better. Yeah. You know, you can talk to somebody and be like, well, I agree, but I also want to hear the other side because fuck, what do I know? You know? Right. I'm obviously like, fucking on this bench you know it's like it's like being a baseball team it's like i'm in this dugout and you're on the other side yeah and he's playing that game i'm watching it adam's doing like he's on podcasts like the whatever podcast talking about his whatever relationship with lena and like the like he had, oh, he's he's shit. arguing with like charlie kirk about fucking monogamy or whatever the fuck it was like some conservative influencer versus Adam on this whatever podcast. And I'm just like, what the fuck is happening? Like, how is he doing? It's like, obviously, not even obvious, a very smart, calculated move to like, create this weird conversation. And just like, everything I see him do, I'm just like, that's fucking smart. As far as like getting attention, like the fucking reality TV show where you're like, you want to fuck my wife, whatever the fuck that is, you know, like, that's a smart move. It's crazy. Smart move in terms of clicks, but I yeah, definitely... in terms of clicks, literally in terms of clicks. I, I worked with them, and I can tell you right now that I can tell when they're they are smarter people than the characters they're playing. You know. Yeah, and that's what I have a feeling of. Like Adam's way smarter than he lets on, which is they're, they're, act, they're acting, and they just don't care. Yes, they acting, they're acting, and yeah, and I don't think that a lot of people have that perception of them. They think what you see is what you get and it's like nah it's calculated as fuck and i think that applies to like literally every public figure that we see you know what i mean like having seen adam come from just bmx to where he is now and seeing the like oh, yeah, bro, i'll just, bro, I'll my, just my, do this and you yeah, got my, to see it firsthand big time dad, no my dad is like 
was wicked obsessed with Tucker Carlson. Yeah. And then then Tucker Carlson splits with Fox and then goes and he's on Theo Vaughn's podcast. And I showed my dad, I was like, I told you he didn't talk like that. You know what I mean? And it's like different teleprompter. Yeah, it made me like him more, honestly. Like, yeah, he made him. He was. He what did your dad think after the Tucker I or him. after the Theo? It like, dude, it was like seven minutes in. He's talking about masturbation. Yeah. So what'd your dad say? My dad was like, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, well, I told you he didn't talk like that. That's what he gets paid to talk like. He talks like. Your dad thought that was like organic Tucker on Fox? That's what those guys think. The people that fuck Fox News me. audience, yeah. They were like, this is our straight edge guy. He's wearing a bow tie and he's fucking yeah. nice. <laughs> hey, hey, hello. Whatever. And if you think that this guy is going to tell you what you want to hear, you know, and then you hear him the next day and yeah. he's just, yeah, I'm just fucking chilling. It's been so nice watching Tucker Carlson's transition from like being trapped in Fox to being a legit human being sharing his actual opinions it's been dope I give, I give a fuck about all that stuff until i have to chime in with my like you know my folks like that's like the oh, you only... got a you got a fox news dad is what you're saying I got a fox news dad yeah is he still fox news dad because i feel like that shit's changed i don't know i don't know man because it's just not exactly where i'm gonna channel entire conversation when i have the time to speak to him but yeah yeah, I guess it would be. We we can chime in on movies from the eighties. What's the uh? What's the like what's the new channel? It's like, it's not Fox News, but it's I guarantee your dad is watching it. It's like, One America or a Real News Network or. I don't know, dude. My dad. It's a new conservative. My dad still tries to like pirate, like, the news. You know, he wants to like. He has some weird fucking. Wait, he tries to pirate the news. What are you saying? Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, I get the news. I get all my channels for free, and I'm like, dude, just. <laughs> Bitch, I'm you like, got a lot of money, Dad. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm like, dude, just pay. That's <laughs> when. Listen, when you were talking earlier in the podcast, <laughs> and you were like, just and you were pay like, for the fucking shit. It comes in yeah. like right away. <laughs> you can watch every fucking like, sport. Things you want to watch Listen, immediately, Dad. Immediately. You're a VP of a residential development company that's world nationwide. Uh, seven bucks a day to go to the skate park. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Take me there. That's what I was thinking when you were saying like they were making that because I paid Jewel Pods, pay fucking Jewel Pods, sixteen to twenty bucks a day, which is ridiculous. I hate it. But yeah, my the dad, point point dad, res- point remains the same. My, my dad makes shit. my mom go out of the county. To go get cartons of cigarettes to like a nicotine, like uh, whatever the shit. Dude, yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, county. You know how much of like the percentage of your dad's net worth that those cigarettes are? It's just like the principle of it that's that he's stuck to, which is what made him rich in the first uh, place. Dude, so I respect tell him all the time. I tell him all the time. I'm like, dude, you should just go drive. <laughs> you should go drive there and save yourself the fucking heartache. <laughs> know what i mean like and just yeah. have a there's a weird dichotomy there of like in order to become your dad you have to be like that and be like penny pinching on every corner like i need to cancel my gym membership i need to cancel my cold plunge and spa membership i need to do all this shit but i'm like i like my quality of life i'm not gonna mind paying it but like yeah. you know you gotta uh, but that's, that's, that's the reason rich people get rich is because they're willing to live like poor people that are like pissed off that they still get their fucking paper thrown at their you know yeah so, oh i didn't even read the paper why do i still get it like cancel it you fucking dumbass <laughs> <laughs> cancel it you fucking dumbass yeah but anyways you know that's uh the you know we're we're definitely way off BMX now. <laughs> oh, it's gone. Yeah. Who cares? Fuck your BMX career. Oh yeah. No, I'm saying you were like, let's get off BMX, and we did. Did I say let's get off BMX? I thought you did. No, I don't know what I said, dude. <clears throat> we are far off. BMX. Who's your Mount Rushmore? Don't. 
Yeah. It while. wasn't a thing when I interviewed you last, so it's been a thing. And don't say don't. Like, you've listened to any episode you haven't, so fuck off. Give me your fucking Mount Rushmore, you stupid idiot. How many people are in the fucking... There's four. You fucking terrible American. First of all, tell me who's on the actual Mount Rushmore as, like, a pop quiz. Bobby Canode. Clearly not, you stupid schmuck. Here, Adam. As if I'm carved into a mountain. You're so stupid, dude. GW. All right, I gave one away. You got one. All I have to do is look at the fucking scene from... Um... All you got to do is Google it, and you can answer it correctly, but why don't you just oh, try dude. You got to watch fucking Richie Rich, and you can fucking find out. It's been literally 20 years since I've watched Richie Rich, so you can... What a great film in 1994. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. It's Macaulay Culkin's follow-up from, you know, you know what. And then next we can talk about LGBTQ and BLM and Biden and <clears throat> all the important stuff. Yeah, dude. Totally. The New World Order, uh, rigged yeah. elections, January 6th being a hoax, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Everybody's blindsided. Do you wear masks? It's kind of nuts. It's all coming at... Oh, I'm too drunk. <laughs> all right, who's your Mount Rushmore? <laughs> I'm fucking going off on tangents. I know. I was like, damn, dude, that sounds sick. We're going to talk about all <laughs> I do want to talk about the real shit, but let's talk about... Let's just... Let's... For the editors... Hi, Archie. Hi, Kiko. Thanks for listening this far, but let's get clips. Is this live? No, but they're going to watch it. And I'll be like, hey, guys, I appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this episode and make clips from it. Um, hi, Tony. Tony Maloof. Tony Maloof. Let me, let, me, uh, let me actually do it properly. This live once a week. I, uh, in Riverside, which we talked about. One <clears throat> comment below that says do it live once a week and we'll do it live once a week. Facts. I will. I would love to do it live. Because then we could like look at comments if people are you know 10 people are watching and they can ask questions that'd be cool because like tony listen here's the thing don't fucking do that to me um one tony here's the thing you yeah. are actually an inspiration to a bunch of people like as much as you don't believe in yourself blah 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 you are the fucking goat you've done so much you're amazing you inspired the shit out of me you said that you were drunk and now you're gonna quote like Listen, shut okay. up, shut up. Fine. So it's important that you're here. Now, that being said, back to the editors. Hi, Archie and Kiko. Please uh, make a clip out of this. Ready? <clears throat> <laughs> I'll wait for Tony to stop laughing. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tony. I was wondering, like, if you had to pick, like, a Mount Rushmore at BMX, people who, like, influence your riding and... Maybe of all time, just a hybrid of the sorts. Who are the first? Who are the first four names that come to your mind when you think about like BMX all time greats? Okay, Bob, I'm gonna give you a force field of uh, my candidates for Mount Ruben grips. Okay, Mount Ruben pedals that I paid a hundred dollars for. <laughs> Yeah, fly rims were super cool at one point. Dude, I remember the bike shop laughing at me when I bought hundred dollar Ruben pedals. But you had to get the, remember the. I hope Ruben, Ruben got like a couple dollars out of that. What I'm gonna say is that uh, I would probably go first with Bobby Canode. Is Listen, on. I don't want you to joke around, but if you're if you're being serious, then thank you. I'll write it down, Bobby Canode. You can cut this out. Yeah, Bobby Canode. I'm not editing it out, so put Kiko, Archie, put my picture on the oh, screen. Bobby Canode, I'm obviously cool. number one yeah, on his Mount Rushmore. He was pretty good Rushmore. at the safety manual stuff, and he was pretty cute when he was on GT and really Cue liked Cue the that. clips. I had spiked up hair. I was doing a how-to. It's cool. Yeah, that's fine. I, des I deserve a Mountain Rushmore placement. Thank you. You're the first. Yeah, I'll give yeah, you. It's huge. It's a big moment in my life. Thank you, Tony. Bobby Canode did stuff for a lot of okay. people. <clears throat> Who's number two? Oh, cool. No, actually, keep elaborating on me, please. 
Bobby Cano, uh, great ass, just fucking fabulous upper hips. It blended into his upper torso and like the fake Emmanuel stuff. I mean, nobody forgets. It's just how it goes. Nice. Uh, the next one, I'll, I'm going to go full Arizona and do Joey Mata. Terrific person. <clears throat> Doesn't know which way to crank flip. He changes his feet. Just going to make this so long so you can't fucking edit it. Um, it's a challenge, Archie. Let's go. Yeah, Archie. Archie, boo, 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 boo. As, uh, who else? We got the uh, the Jeff Westcotts. Yeah. Who is just so diverse. God, I'm so happy to hear Jeff Westcott on a Mount Rushmore. This is great. Yeah, I would say put him on. Please check out his light work section. Yeah. And also his 1235 section. Yeah, look for his 1235 section coming out in fucking 2025. You said 24, you piece of shit. This is a fun list. All right, you got one more. This is my favorite podcast ever, dude. It has devolved. Who the hell would it be though? It's like so Yeah, you're like you're like finally I'll take it seriously. Okay, Dave Mira. <laughs> like, like my goddamn I self. I said Arizona. J E D G Oh, you did say Arizona. Okay. So we got Bobby Cano, Joey Motto, Jeff Westcott. Jeff might as well he lived here for a while. All right, that's interesting. All right, hit me with your fourth. This is I sick. I like this a lot. Who's your fourth? I just for Arizona. I can just do J.E. Dude, shout out J.E. He deserves it, honestly. That's a good answer. One of the most underappreciated free yeah. coaster riders yeah. of all time. Josh Alkin. So special like... to me, personally. Like, No, he, he he's was so like... incredible inspiration to an inspirational period of free coaster Big entre- time. like the people there's that- one video that sticks out in my mind of him at a skate park. him he inspired you know like there was a time when when that still happened if you understand what i'm saying you know no like like bruce chrisman was like <clears throat> bruce ian like that was a generation, and then after them, Josh J E, and then after J E, still like those dudes. It was still like a time when those guys saw the other generation come in. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. There's this one video where he's riding a skate park that's like super graffitied. You yeah, know what I'm talking about Davin- Davenport. Yeah. Conquer- so I searched J E Davenport, and it'll work out. Like it literally ruined me because he's doing the biggest shit, just like the craziest, just like 90 and then land and then half cab down something. And it's probably not that crazy now, but he's desert miles. Yeah, that's what it is. That shit was huge. So what can you say about miles? I should talk to miles. There's there's another lane. There's another lane. Miles and me, we were fucking definitely like the trail kids, basically. Like he was turned downs to I was toboggans. I don't know. We just started doing trail tricks down stair sets and And it all worked out, brother. Yeah, we wanted to basically copy like Baker, like the skateboard era. It's no mystery. Like everybody can call it and I'll admit oh, yeah. it. You know? There's but we no were shame like, in that either. Oh, we'll just we'll just do fucking Big fair sets and everybody copied it to be honest. And then it's crazy because, like, you guys had a big influence. It's nuts because that's the thing, that's how art works. Like, you think about an artist from the 50s who's painting some shit, but they have influences from the 1850s. And then that artist from the 1850s is not original, they had influences from the 1760s, you know, like. That's what art is. It's a, that's the nature of it. 
that's that's a big hurdle i think people have to get over is just like the ego of like i have to create something completely original from my mind because i'm the fucking best human that's ever existed and i'm unique like no you're not like you just have to appreciate dope shit and be like i'll make some dope shit yeah what a hell of a mount rushmore all right well you don't you don't also want to i want you to acknowledge my you editor don't, you RG. don't also want to like emulate as much like or you don't want to copy you want to emulate like you want to take in reference reference to something that's gonna push forward you know you don't want to steal you know like what that, some people would call it steal i'm looking up the quote picasso pablo picasso on creativity good artist copy Great artist steal. This quote by Pablo Picasso was a favorite of Steve Jobs, who said he stole the concept of the Macintosh computer from a similar similar device that was shown to him at Xerox's Palo Alto Research Center. That seems like a cop out. <laughs> you should just emulate. Don't steal. Now that yeah. I'm seeing the origin of that, that's just Steve Jobs being a good capitalist. Capitalism. You know what I'm saying? Great artist copy. Great artist steal. That's interesting. My vocabulary isn't particularly up to par, but I would say you would want to emulate rather than copy. Yeah. Well, I mean, if your ego's intact, then you should do your own thing, but take influence from other people. So, Tony. Influence across definitely a big, like... Yeah. Yeah. Right. Be influenced, and that's a that's a word that is now like kind of been tarnished because everybody's an influencer. But oh, man, fuck that, that, no, no, that no. word is fucking stupid. <clears throat> well, no, no, it's not stupid because you're influencing the opinion of others, which has monetary value, and they can make a living just by being popular on the internet. It's a wonderful world we're living in. Honestly, you have to look at it like that. This is so crazy. Like you literally don't have to leave your room. You just make whatever the fuck TikToks and be like. What's up, guys? Today, outfit of the day is Cartier and ba 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 and ba ba ba, and then you get paid a thousand dollars, and you're like, <laughs> "I made money for the day." Shout out to them. No, I mean I agree that, but no, I agree that. Uh, fucking a normal ass hot girl that's just alone in her room, miserable, now is devalued because. Just because you're hot, you're alone in your room, just shooting a fucking video and monetizing it. You're alone. wait, wait, wait. You're saying devalued? Why? Okay, because she might be making money, but she's alone in her room. So it doesn't matter how hot she is. Now she's alone. no. This doesn't mean she's devalued. That means she's upvalued. She's making money in her room. She's yeah, more she, valuable. No, I would rather yeah. go. I would rather go meet a six in public and have a real relationship with them as a as a valuable person you have to like make your own money and then meet that six yeah but who's this 12 that's sitting in their room filming themselves with a ring light fuck them that's not all they're doing then they're gonna go out and meet 12 value men you're just not a 12 that's why you're salty about it I'm not salty about it. I just don't respect them. I think that they are they're deprived of a real life. And I don't with you. Nah, it's not like that at all. Come on. I see what you're saying. I'm just talking shit. Yeah, come on, Bob. Carry on, carry on, carry on. Right. I'm just saying, come on. I kind of see what you're saying. It's just the fact that it's it's just like the way society has evolved, dude. It just looks like a fucking pretty miserable life. You know how it is when you go home and you no, like it, it like you, looks shiny to, on the outside. Oh, you have to edit videos and you don't fucking want to. It ain't pretty. Those, those girls fucking have to do the same thing. They right. film fucking little videos with their ring cameras and then they post. I think them. I I think they, I agree with the main they, essence of they, the point. They wait all day in their fucking lonely ass apartments to fucking wait for their views and their money to come in so they can go buy drinks with guys that don't even treat them good. I think so. What is the ideal? What I'm thinking is like, I'm putting myself from their perspective, and it's like, oh shit, I can make money just being hot. I'll make content at home, 
And like, everybody has to go through the learning curve of like, wake up, do your shit. Like the fact that, so like, here's an interesting topic. What is the nine to five? That's so crazy that we just like hire people and we're like, you got to work from nine to five and you get a one hour lunch break and blah, blah, blah. Like, that's just kind of like made up. It's like to create not value in, not hmm? in every state, not in every state, but to and create, that's like, <clears throat> huh? Like me and you, like we've moved around people, people don't even know that, you know? Like, like, and that's what I'm saying. Like you and I have experienced the evolution of that where it's like, that's not that's not necessarily true so like these girls are just living in this new world of like you have to spend x amount of hours a day doing the thing that makes money so like i can imagine myself being an only fans model and being like treating it like work and like waking up i have to figure out my morning routine i will go do this 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 and this to make myself feel good and i'll, I'll be like myself every day with whether it's meditating going to the gym co plunge sauna, whatever the fuck, and then drink. And then for, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., I'm creating content for my OnlyFans. I'm creating content for my YouTube. I'm creating content for whatever brings in revenue. And then it's like almost fun. It's like I have a great morning, and then I tune in, and I get naked, and I jack off or whatever the fuck. You know, I have sex with my neighbors, whatever the fuck it is. Like we're in this new economy where it's the internet. Like there's so many ways to make money. It's almost like frustrating like i see it on podcasts and people talking about it. i'm like what the fuck i just went to a party and people are like making money off of like sharing the knowledge of ai they have this coaching course that like they just basically they get 25 bucks a month from everybody who joins and they share ai tips of like go to this website and they'll teach you how to make a fucking ai character of yourself who talks and it's like so bro scary. they're paying 25 bucks a month for that that's crazy but it is what it is same with real estate that's the game i'm in and they're paying way more than 25 bucks a month which is valid because that's how much you make like it's a value-based pricing thing whatever but that's the new world that we're in we don't have to work nine to fives you have to figure out how to make money on the internet and then figure out your life around it and i'm in this weird space personally where i'm like still fully in the whatever that's why i, I don't feel i don't feel What's the word? I don't feel disdain. I have no disdain. I have no negative feelings towards people who are doing OnlyFans, people who are doing like a uh, group of people who are like coach me on how to be sexier. I don't even know. There's so many ways to make money off the internet that it's like, what are we doing, bro? Like, <laughs> what is this BMX? What is this BMX nonsense? I understand what you're saying, but I also don't know what disdain means. Disdain means distaste. Yeah. So, so what... I don't like disdain yeah. means like don't I like. Care. Yeah, yeah, cool. You fucking premature baby ass, short ass, dumb ass motherfucker. Nah, just like disdain <laughs> like a new word. Or another word so. Disdain's not a new word, dude. I'm not trying to be fucking fancy, dog. I'm just... Just... I don't know what disdain means. Let me read it to you. D stain. No, it's dis dang. The feeling that someone or something is unworthy of one's consideration or respect. Contempt. Ah, uh, dude, it might as well just say W O K E. Woke. Yeah. <laughs> disdain. Yeah. Fuck you. Disdain is not woke. Okay. I'll be damned woke if you call disdain woke. No. Dude, that it's is fuck. Oh my god, I've never been so insulted. You call it woke, and then I'm just like, no, 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 no. Stained, dude. You're a schmuck Everyone, for calling me woke. You are stained, dude. You're. Let's just mm. do a stained song. To and... look at something with disdain is what the woke people used to do, but now woke is so whack that it's stained. Oh dude. my god, dude. All right, so let's get to the real shit. Are you vaccinated? pussy ass you probably are because you were in california when the shit was going on huh i'm gonna grab my fucking weed vape then dude smoking bong on the fucking podcast let's go dude uh in this reach, I'll still hear you. my dog is uh i got my dog's nuts clipped how is that relevant
Did you clip that fucking Charleston chew? Uh, uh, Archie is his name. Archie, you little fuck. Listen, this right here is essential oils, peppermint. And if you want to get a good night's sleep, if you're congested, timestamp that for fucking Archie right now. You fucking Archie, you timestamp it yourself, dog. It's nine twenty-four. I don't know. Fucking uh, plug. This is what I do every night. So I snort this stuff. And <sighs> have Archie email them to get them to fucking sponsor the shit. I'm so happy to have you on, Tony. It's the first podcast with a real friend that it can devolve into some bullshit. And we haven't even really like touched. We talked earlier about revealing the fact that I have herpes. That's a fun one. You want to talk about me having herpes? Does it affect your life? I don't have herpes. So it doesn't affect your life. <clears throat> I don't know if people are listening, not in America, but this weed is legal and you can just buy a vape like a jewel. It's pretty great. King Louie. Are you just going to chop this part out or is this real? Because I love this. This is real? Fuck it. Yeah. <sighs> I get, dude, when I first found out, I like dissociated. I uh, I had lived with Metzger. It was five or six years ago. And uh, who told me? I can't remember. It was one of the girls that I was hooking up with. And she was like, hey, I just got tested. You have this. And then I was like, oh, this is going to ruin my life. And then... Um, the way I dealt with it was just being matter of the fact and just telling all the homies. Like I was driving, I think I was driving a 97 Dodge Caravan at the time. I was cruising around with Metzger and Troy Blair and we were going to a spot to shoot a photo and get a clip. And I was just like, sorry, boys. I'm not even sorry. Hey, boys. Well, I found out I got herpes. And it was, it was so much heavier back then. Like it doesn't mean much to me anymore. Like everybody has it. Like literally one out of four, one out of three people have it now at this point. And it doesn't affect your life at all. Like you get a pimple every couple months. <clears throat> but I thought it was the end of the world. And I went through like the craziest depression, bad time. I'll give, I'll give you my fucking example, right? Like I thought I had herpes when I was like 20. And I went to the doctor so many times and he kept telling me he's like dude you do not have it unless you have an outbreak come back and see me no he's just like you do not you do not you do not and then and like, no listen i got it i don't know what to tell you doc but i got it i was just so scared it was because i had like uh i had a cast like a fucking you know i had a cast had on a my thick cast no just like a cast a, of my look at that vein dog look at that tony okay. Tony. What do we got? Tony, look at me. Look at this vein. There you go. That's a cock vein on my arm, dude. What's up? Ben? What are you looking at? Ben, ben. You in the, ben, you in the can? Ben, come here. I'm out here, dude. Come out here, Ben. You know, no. My jewel. I gotta find my jewel, dude. This is like bonus episode. This is going on the Patreon. Fucking bag. Should have ended this episode an hour ago. Hold on. We're keeping it going because well, whatever, dog. Pause. I don't, I don't know if we've ever met before, but um, I Dude, watch your Ben, phone. listen. I know you and you know me. We've been friends yeah. for quite a while, okay? Because okay. of the internet. Because of the power of the internet. I don't think we've ever met IRL, but I like you a lot. Hi, Ben. Sick. I like you too. I Good watch to you. I've been watching all your interviews, dude. Get the fuck out of here. Well, Tony's on one right now. What do you want to talk about? We can yeah, do dude, one later, but... Don't say IRL. I will kill you. Me? I, I did I say IRL or did he? You did. Okay, well, I'm just stoned. You know what I'm saying? It's fine. Mm-hmm. Ben, you're so talented on the bike. How's your life going? Uh, Thank you. And I'm chilling, dude. Uh, Yeah, honestly, just riding, working, not that much, but... Most this is, is the 
<coughs> Sorry. <coughs> you only drop in the toilet. <coughs> First time smoking weed over here. Sorry. Oh, you're... <coughs> yeah. <Best. coughs> Jesus Christ, Ben. Good for you. <coughs> I was just looking at. There's a local homie here named Jarrett Bennett. Yeah. Do you know who Jared is? He does Woe BMX. Uh, sounds familiar. I probably you showed me clips or pictures or something. I'd probably recognize him. <laughs> I'm just a little spacey. Right now. He's a native dude. He's from here. His older brother shreds too. Joel and Jarrett, and they're sick. They've they were the weirdos. Like I think six or seven years ago, it was like, what the fuck? Like Jarrett would show up at a spot and do the weirdest shit. Like just fucking ignorant. Just like literally one up somebody that while they're trying a clip for my camera, just like, oh, I'll do it and then fucking do it. Just like dumb shit. <clears throat> but they're grown up and then they figured out, oh, there's no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Like he's like, you got to get a job and just keep writing BMX and sharing your videos for the love of it. Like there's no real like I'm going to make 150, 200 grand a year doing this. It's never going to happen in BMX unless you're like five people in the world maybe and even yeah, then it's still like such a niche you're like winning contests a lot but yeah, yeah exactly like you can make uh, a dope living but it's it's a different it's a different yeah. thing from like what the core is which is you know it is what it is so like the fact that you have a job and you're just doing your thing is respectable that's what i was getting at that's that's the essence of what i'm saying yeah i appreciate that that's yeah, like yeah, yeah. All my friends are pros, you know, dude. Everybody I ride with on a regular basis. Or... So you already know. Pretty much pro. Yeah. It's... Are they balling? <laughs> you want to go on a private jet no, with your no, home? No, they're, they're doing yeah. all right. But, yeah, uh, exactly. Randall. Good taste of it, at least. What do you they think get... of Ben Ellen? Yeah, Randall loves me, I think. He gets pissed. <laughs> from... scared, but besides that, I think he likes me. <laughs> Randall, do you do you agree? Randall, man, Tony, you don't even realize you got the BMX house. Do we have? Is it a BMX house? None of you, Ben, are you riding? I think you're the riding. only one, huh? Tony doesn't even ride. It's a BMX house, but we are runner up. Yeah, I mean, and we should probably, yeah, we should probably like try to. We were, like, we're it for a minute. Like, yeah, we had the ramp for a while. That sucked that we had to get rid of it, but. Why'd you have to get rid of it? Oh, landlords, dude. Australian. Ooh. Landlords you know, are real. You have an Australian landlord? We'll talk about that, dude. You know? Australians are cutthroat businessmen. They're talking about all this war. There's wars going on. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> There's wars going on in other places, dude. <laughs> Listen, the United States doesn't look that good right now, okay? Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Their ramps out. Hey man, why are you fucking starting World War Three? <laughs> I know, man. Oh, well, definitely... they, got, they got like five riders over at that house. They got Trent, <clears throat> uh, Grant, David, and I guess Maddie. So, but they just got more people over there. I feel, you know. Yeah, you say yeah, that house. What is this got... house? Uh, What's this Trent. house? Trent's. Trent's house. What's it called? Bat. They don't have a name. We got the compound. The so. compound, yeah. <laughs> What'd you like, just say though? You just said like that I just house. Call, I just call it that house over at that. Oh, house. that house over at that house. Okay, I thought you literally thought you said bat house, and I was like, "Word, like we you got a superhero." Our, the next house, and I was oh like, yeah, like, we're, we're kind of right, but we, just because they're yeah. outnumbering us, <laughs> we're kind of second. No, yeah, we're like second best. <laughs> Is there an award ceremony for the best Austin, it's Texas? I, I, I sleep, you know. But yeah, yeah. Everybody's already there was a while where we were like, kind of like, everybody come here. Austin is good right now, you know? Like, no fuck. shit. Of course it's good. You know, fucking Chase's house is kind of open enough. Yeah, they, and he got the skate park going, which is pretty dope. They like, I don't know. I don't want to air his shit out, but Chase? Yeah, they're like, they what's his shit? Out. What are you going to air out? They they made his ramp and then they like filmed all the stuff. So he now he says everyone's welcome. To yeah, come after, yeah, yeah. After they did that, everybody now can like go there. Yeah, I think it's a little cool. intimidating just to to hit Chase Hawk up and be like, "Hey, can I come to your house?" 
So not many. Yeah, people. but also at the same time, like, don't think that way. Just be like, yo, I want to ride your ramp. Can I ride your ramp? Like, BMX oh, is so yeah. fucking small. Like, who the fuck is Chase Hawk? He's a pro BMX rider. He's making money doing the same <laughs> shit that you guys do. What are you talking about? Why or put him on a pedestal? Like, it's weird to hit him up. Hit him up. No, yeah, it's also far. He's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, How like, far is it? We we are like welcome there, but it's just like rare, you know. Like it's like uh, it's a rare occasion. No, what know? I'm talking about is like it's it one o'clock in the morning. Listen, boys, it's one o'clock in the morning. You've partied, and you're like, listen, I'm gonna catch an Uber, and instead of going home, I'm gonna go to Chase Hawk's house, and then <laughs> you go there, and you set up some lights, and you film a whole video, and then you make a whole thing out of it, and then you can prank him like uh, Bam Margera. Uh -huh. You just pop into his window and you're like, what's up, bitch? We're riding your ramp. Can you do this? And then you do a 360 table over some principals of some high schools that you invited. And they're sitting on the center of his ramp at his house. And then it's just like, bitch, you can't do this. You didn't invite Oh, well, that was funny that they had uh, like. Uh, it was you... sick that he's three tabling over principals instead of like the classic backflip or front flip. Sorry, yeah, yeah. That has yeah. nothing to do with what you're saying. That was dope, dude. I can tell you when I when I used to get those jobs to do those fucking school shows and whatever. It's like total city money, you know? So they would pay pretty well. And it would be like, if you can't three whip, 720, backflip or whatever, like they would have like a trick list. But it's silly, right? Yeah, but all you had to do is like, I would three whip that box jump back in the day when I was younger. And you would get the same amount as anybody that could do backflips. Yeah. And that was like how they priced it, you know? They Isn't like, it crazy that that's some people's first taste of BMX? Yeah. No, I would. That's how we made money on top of your, on top of your like salary. Randall, get off me. Sorry, I couldn't fucking focus. Um, yeah, that's exactly how it was. You would make your checks from like three sponsors, four sponsors, whatever. And then every once in a while, you'd have to go 720 of us. Do some shows. Ben, what was your, Ben, have you gotten money from BMX? Uh, not really, besides just like at jams or like, uh, I was getting paid to like post on Instagram and shit for a while. But, uh, By who? For what? Uh, Sunday was was doing a thing for a while where they were paying the riders. Uh, they uh, they kind of held back on it a couple years back, but but yeah, I don't know. They were paying me like hundred bucks a month or something to just like post. I think it's worth it because I I don't know that might have been the period of time where I got to know you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I haven't made any like serious money or anything. I've always had a job. Honestly. Nobody has. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and I enjoy. What are you doing now uh, for work? I think I asked you this, but. I'm sorry, I don't. I know. Mini golf. Huh? Like, and it's got from a from a homie. It's a place that like a bunch of bike riders have worked at in town. What are you doing? Like, right sorry. You playing mini golf? Mini golf. Fuck yeah, let's go. It's I don't know. It's just like this mini golf place in town that like like Brad used to work at. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's not a, it's not only a gig too. Like it's pretty famous in Austin. Hell yeah. yeah it's a pretty big spot. I mean. Well, quit underselling it. Say, I, like I work that. at the most popular mini golf spot in Austin, which says a lot. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, and it's like BYOB. You can pull up and Jared like, Swap. Remember him? Here's the difference between you and a bunch of like people. I have a thought. I'm gonna share my thought and then continue. Okay, my bad. But I I'm think you guys it. and I do too. But we all undersell ourselves so hard. You know what I mean? You work at the sickest mini golf spot in Austin. Tony, you're an established. You know what I mean? Like we just fucking shit on ourselves for no reason. Hey, you're always, you're always. I see what you're saying. Yeah, you're We're right. our own biggest hater. I Am I? This so, might be out of nowhere, and I might be stoned because I hit my little weedy vape pen. But I think that's facts. Am I wrong? I just got home from the mini golf spot, and I'm just like, oh, fuck that place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. You know, we all hate the dope shit that we're doing. Eventually, I have like. Uh, like leniency like i have days off where i can just ride i can go camp i love to camp and shit i can fucking do you go. have a bunch of like hold on pause let's talk about this austin's like geography how far do you have to go to camp in some cold climate can you uh, in texas even cold climate 
I mean, you can't, just don't really like, like, you don't really want to camp during the summer. It's like way too hot, but right now it's like pretty, it's perfect in, in Texas. It's like 70. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm like so. thinking, cause like I'm spoiled cause I'm here. And if I wanted to go to Flagstaff three hours away, I get to freeze my ass off versus being in the armpit of the valley. Yeah. And I was thinking about Texas. There's not like big mountains there. No. Yeah. Just I mean, flat ass center of fucking America. Ben, do you have guns? No, I don't have guns. <laughs> God My damn it. I got to live vicariously. You guys don't have guns. Tony, you have guns. I'm pretty, I don't know, dude. I, I've never even shot a gun. Like, I, I can't, I can't say I'm like that Texan where I just like shoot guns all the time or anything. <laughs> all right. You got to get out of Texas, dude. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. There's usually a gun around somewhere. Like I used to live with a uh, Walter Perringer and he just has like a shotgun just like hanging out. Oh, yes. Know? I didn't think I could like Walter anymore. <laughs> That's amazing. There's just like, you know, there's been a gun around. If I had the chance to fucking use it, if I needed to, maybe I could have, but I, I don't know. I, I don't really like to touch them. <laughs> Listen, I'm just a big fan of freedom to do it. <sighs> yeah. I think it'd be cool to go shoot some. I don't own one myself. But yeah. I like the, I like the idea. Oh yeah. It's, the fact that Walter had one is pretty fire. Yeah. He's seen, he's a smart guy that'll like, he, he knows how to use Dude, it. Dude, you know what that conundrum is for me right now? Like, in Arizona, you can't get a medical marijuana license. And like, all I want to do is have a uh, tinctures and that's the only medical thing. So like, if I have my medical marijuana license, I can't get a gun. That's Arizona. Oh. Yeah. I'm like, I just want I if something like that. In Texas, and I don't have either. Like I haven't even gone to get a gun, even though I've been like, I should get my medical marijuana license. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. nah, hold on. I want to own a gun. And then I don't own it for like literally three years since the last time I planned on getting the marijuana license. We it's... get, we get fucking, uh, arrested in Chicago. Dude, you guys are strict. Wait, what is Texas right now? Well, no, in Chicago, me and Robbie digital. So if you go watch like, I don't know, fucking Road Fools 14 or something, when before, before Aiken got hurt, you know? Yeah. And doing this manual on this like ledge that like starts at like peg height and then it goes to like fucking high. You're over there. It's off of Michigan Avenue and Ooh, excuse me. It's on Michigan Avenue, and we're on the fucking ledge, and I'm just like looking at it. And the cops roll up on me, and they just are like, "Hey, get down!" And I'm like, "Hey, my bad. I was just looking at the spot. I thought maybe I could like do a cool bike trick. I'm not doing anything." And they're like, "It's okay. Get down." And I I put my backpack on, and I grab my bike. Hold on. <laughs> hey, sweetheart. Hello. We're doing the podcast. Oh, wow. Sorry. Yeah, I just got your missed call, so I was returning. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm sorry, sweetheart. I love you, too. All right. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Um, oh, damn. Yeah. yeah. Well, Dude, girlfriend is all around. Uh, <laughs> Dude, so anyways, we're in Chicago, and these police, like, pull up on us, and I am looking at the spot, and I just say, no problem, I'm going to get down. My bike wasn't even up there, but when we get down, this dude goes, we got to arrest you. Sorry, you're under arrest. Yeah, I was like, okay. <laughs> Uh, what do I do? And they were like, put your arms behind your back. And I was like, fuck. So now we're under arrest for fucking looking at a spot. Fair. And <laughs> there goes Ben. Bye, Ben. Bye, Ben. You bet. Um, so we basically are under, I'm under arrest at this point. And Robbie Digital comes up and he goes, you know, why would you arrest him? He didn't do anything. We didn't even ride it. 
And then they were like, okay, you turn around too. <laughs> and they arrest Robbie's digital. <laughs> and we're just both like under arrest in handcuffs. In Texas? Like, no, this is in Chicago. Oh yeah, you said that. <laughs> yeah. And they uh they arrest us for no reason. They're just like, Well, we gave out a bunch of tickets tonight and we have to arrest some people, so you guys are going you know, for like two hours. It'll be like two hours. We're like, okay, no big dude, nineteen hours. That's wild. That yeah. they would be that open about it. Yeah. And like, uh, listen, we gotta meet a quota. You guys down to come to jail for two hours? And like about and like about our camera bags, is like the guy goes, Oh, well, if you're a homie you can take your camera bags, then blah blah blah, he can take your camera bag, blah blah. blah. Then <laughs> um, so luckily they took the camera bags and then they took our bikes so they had to call for a paddy wagon I got photos of it but they, they had photos like or I mean they took us in a paddy wagon with our bikes for no reason and I had my weed in my nuts <laughs> my weed in my nuts and went to jail with it and we we smoked it like yeah like right when i got out (laughs) yeah 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 because i I, well in my in my handcuffs i was able to like sneak around and i got in my pocket and then and then i grabbed the weed and then i put it in my nuts and i went to jail with with the weed in my nuts (laughs) and and our bikes (laughs) Why did they send you to jail in the first place, though? Because you because you were riding the spot. Oh no! Just all for standing on like a ten foot ledge, just standing like on looking the ledge. at like a high ass spot. That's what? it. Yeah, we were looking at a spot, and they said, "Like, hey, uh, you're too far up there." The, t- <laughs> the ticket literally reads like uh, "reckless endangerment," you know, mm-hmm. which is essentially um, quit being silly. Just being reckless. And no. <laughs> Suicide, like, like. Oh, to... what? Yeah. Dude, that's Damn, this just got heavier. Yeah, yeah. there's that's kind of like a part. Like being on a ledge and just like trying to commit suicide, and we're like, it was only ten feet. Yeah. You know what the fuck? Uh, dude, that was it. I would have been furious in jail, dude. Yeah, yeah and they arre- and him. they arrested my friend for just coming up and trying to defend me. Which friend? Uh, Robbie did. Uh, Robbie did. <laughs> ben, who's your Matt Rushmore? Uh, it was a. Uh, What's your Rob? My yeah. Matt Rushmore. Oh, uh, bike yeah. riders. Yeah. We can go like over it again fit. when we do a full episode, but give me your brief Mount Rushmore. All right. Number one, gotta be like Garrett Reynolds. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, correct. One. That's correct. I'd say Dennis Anderson's in there too. Correct. Yep. And then I'm gonna give the other two spots to my friends Matt Nordstrom and Brett Silva. Matt, wow. <laughs> honestly, both deserve four spots. Matt Rushmore, right? Four. Yeah. Four. Okay. four. See, he knows Tony. Why didn't you know? You're an American <laughs> dog. Ben, you're in a you're a good American. Isn't it weird that there's just like four? huge faces carved in a fucking mountain yeah super weird. <laughs> I've and never then, like i didn't know i didn't know the faces when i first started asking this question i just like lufa asked it to me at a bar you know what he said he was like what's the mount rushmore of people that are good at biking that you hate watching and then we all said it at the bar and it was hilarious and then i took it and made it nice and put it into the podcast because <laughs> yeah. dude it was very <laughs> fun just like privately shitting on people in the industry who we love but it's just like so fun to talk shit it was great you guys should do it after we're off it's like who's good at biking that when you see their videos you're like fuck them it's a beautiful thing don't say it right now that ruins the whole point you have to do it off camera but you're doing like my friends are doing the most fucked up tricks ever dude yeah like literally like i don't even like doubt when you say matt and brett are on the mount rushmore like i'm with you they're so fucking good. It's like a, they're not recognized yet. Matt, especially like we're witnessing 
unbelievable shit that literally has never been seen before and he's like yeah. so yeah, many like so many levels ahead brett in his own way too but like matt especially is just tech lord it's kind of dumb it's like yeah. we in 10 years we're gonna look back and be like holy shit we got to witness matt nordstrom he's that special same yeah. with brett dude both of those dudes motivated the shit out of me yeah you. matt nordstrom is basically like fucking <laughs> danny hickerson yeah but yeah like but Brett is like Ruben in the sense of like, he's taking like the toboggan and doing it over rail hop, but ha adding an extra trick in the middle of it. That's not even a trick. Just like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, it. it's so nuts, dude, Brett. And the fact that he's that dope of a person is an extra 200%. Well, shit, got, any, got any unheard Brett Silva stories? What do the people need to know? Well, Stories, yeah. Go. Um, fuck, dude. Oh. Uh, okay, I'm gonna tell one that might not be that that heard. Um, all right. The, do you know the the set in Austin called Green Goblin? Yeah. All right. Uh, so Brett used to have this motorcycle, and we used and like, you know, we used to cruise around on the motorcycle, like nut to butt, like. Just occasionally, <laughs> you know, like I'd be on the back of it or something. And one day we'd go by Green Goblin and like we're like, let's film ourselves like firecracking, firecrackering up Green Goblin on the motorcycle. Nice. And uh, we like try to go for it. And some random dude was there and he's like down to film it. And we like, I, I don't know, it was like kind of scary, dude, we're, like on a motorcycle going up a huge set. And like, I don't know, I just scary. remember like just fuck it let's do it and like this dude random person is filming it and like commentating and shit and like we like go up it and just loop out at the top and like fall back and like didn't get hurt at all but it was just like the stupidest thing that like you could ever do i don't know like just two yeah motorcycles on a motorcycle trying to go up a big stair set <laughs> it's a beautiful thing as, as soon as you were talking about like Brett Silva stories, I was like, dude, honestly, we've done some pretty dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> as you should. I feel yeah, like I that's what life's about. Riding a motorcycle up Green Goblin. That's where it's it. like, it's almost secondhand nature to become who Brett is. Like, it's just part of fun is doing crazy shit. Same with you. Like, you, guys, that, you guys do yeah. dangerous shit on your bikes and you're just like, it's the same attitude. Like, yeah, we can. It's fucking wild. You guys are wild boys. You shred too, dude. Uh, Brett, I'm not, dude. I'm not a wild boy. I'll tell you that much. You guys are wild boys. Lately, I've been more just trying to keep it low to the ground or something. But hey, dude, Brett's flying through the air. You're jumping down the big. Yeah, ship. Brett's soaring. Brett's at thirty thousand feet right now. Stoked. Man, the dude. fact that he got that medal when I was there that was pretty fire. Yeah, we were. He was texting like, <laughs> the whole time. He was. Uh, like in between runs, like of the X uh, on, during X games, he's like hitting up the group chat, like what should I do? And we're all like, <laughs> X and I'm like, fucking go for it, do this. And I don't know, he was it was so sick for us to see him, you know, get silver. And he's just the homie. Yeah. Like I was there with Matt, and we were supposed to, you know, it was such a trip, and just meeting Brett for the first time, having known him and you, like I feel like I know you just because of the internet. Like I, when I saw Brett, I was just like, what's up? You know, like we know each other, obviously, and it was love. Same with you if I ever see you. But oh, yeah, was, sure. Brett's just such a guy, you know, like he's just a human being. There's no yeah. air of like, I'm Brett Silva, which is like makes him more of Brett Silva. Like you're the fucking best, you know? Yeah, I, I no one has ever like, I swear no one's ever been like, yeah, I don't know about that guy, Brett. You know, like everyone's yeah. like, and he's sick, he's funny. And he's like his other half, his woman, his Oh, yeah, Jason. Amazing cool. human. Like, it's so dope. Yeah, it's sick. They got married and everything. They got a cool spot in town. I'm sure they got cool plans cooking, too. I don't know. Let's, uh, we should do a... Let's actually talk on the record. Yeah. For now. for now, give me back to the subject of this podcast, Tony Maloof. Where's he yeah. at? I'm going to say bye. I gotta, I'm going to hang out. Get with out of here, Ben. Love Get you. the fuck out. <laughs> Keep it up. Bye, Ben. All right, Bob. It's time, dude. We gotta go. Look at Randall.
Hıcı bıbı. Hıcı bıbı. Huh? Yeah. Oh. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Get all crazy. Uh, what a late night episode. All right. Well, um, that was fun. A lot of time. We'll see. We're putting it out. <clears throat> I love you, dog. Love you too, man. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm over it. We out of here. It's ten o'clock, dog. We gotta go to bed. Bye, Randall. Jesus Christ, he's cute. <clears throat> All right, that was fun. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, likewise, man. I have hesitations right now about putting this out, but I'm going to do it. See you later. I don't think anything bad happened, no? Eh, yeah, well, we'll Get drunk put it out. Me and Maloof, that's the title. Well, I think maybe we'll do more, because that was fun. Yeah, but it was only three hours, so. Uh, oh, damn, only three hours? Yeah, terrible that's, episode. That sucks. <laughs> before next time all right uh what do i say at the end of you don't fucking watch what's up nerds thanks for watching see you in the next week hopefully you enjoyed this that's it i don't know bye yeah love us bye please love us bye hey thanks for watching please like and subscribe rate the show share it with a friend and uh yeah, have a good day.